championship and be right in the thick of the BCS. Nebraska, if they can win out, win this game, take care of Colorado on Thanksgiving weekend, they would be the northern representative. It's a huge game. My partner's Bob Greasy. Everybody around the country that loves playoff uh, theory in college football, uh, I don't know, maybe this is our playoff Saturday. Well, everybody wants a playoff in college football, and I'm saying you're in it. Last week, Penn State loses to Minnesota. Penn State is eliminated. The loser of this game is out of the title chase. Virginia Tech tonight plays Miami. If they lose, they're out of it. Florida State next week goes to Florida. Yep. If they lose, or whichever team loses, they're out of it. So we're in the middle of a college football playoff. You know, three states west of us tonight, it's Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis in a heavyweight fight. That's kind of what we have here today. It is, and it's with the defenses. You know, I always, quarterback, I like offenses, but this game is going to be dominated by the defenses. Two heavyweights, the two top defenses, two of the five top ones in the nation, but Kansas State's defense must play much better because they need to produce field position and turnovers to help their offense win. And they've done that this year. Amazingly, they're still the number two scoring team yeah. offensively in the yeah. country. Amazing. Well, it's history on Nebraska's side again today, though. 31 years the last time the Wildcats were able to win here in Lincoln. And you can bet those guys in those white and red helmets, the seniors who are being introduced right now, don't want a two-game winning streak for the Wildcats of Kansas State. You have to go back to the late 50s, the last time that's happened, the 58-59 seasons, the last time Kansas State won two in a row with these guys in red. So the crowd expected to be a record number today of over 77,000. The temperature is 84 degrees with sunshine. Did we take a long time to get to Lincoln or what? very much Brad you know when you have great defense it's hard for the offense to look good or control the game but look for the offense to go for the big play and for Kansas State the big play comes wearing number 32 David Allen he is all set to break the NCAA record for a punt returns for a touchdown he wants to go after it and look for him behind the center to do a great job running the football now on the other side for Nebraska they've got a young man wearing number 12 who is like the Peter Warwick of the Nebraska football team because they want to give him the ball all over the place on reverses on passes and hand it to him that's Bobby Newcomb and he can do it all now no ball control I don't think you'll see in this ball game but the big play will present itself in few opportunities the team that can capitalize see the opportunity I think will be the team that comes out the winner this afternoon great point Swanee and I don't know if I've ever gone through a week when we've talked more about special teams Mike Solich looking for a big win his second year as head coach he's lost only once at home at home. Bill Snyder has done one of the greatest production jobs in the history of college football. It's the 11th season. One and nine against Nebraska, the one game last week. 0 and 5, though, here in Lincoln. But again, a nine-game winning streak. And that's tied with Florida State and Virginia Tech behind Marshall as the second-best streak in the country. Gorgeous 
mid November shadow. One at the bit on the sideline. He played a good game last year at over 100 yards, both rushing and throwing, and still came up short, 40 to 30. Brad, I can remember being here the second week in November. The temperature was 25 degrees, <laughs> and the rain was going sideways. <laughs> Quite a difference. Randy Stella and Joe Walker are back at the goal line, awaiting the kick of Jamie Ream as Kansas State won the toss and deferred. Ream, an excellent kicker, as he took over for the guy that won the Groza last year and Martin Gramatica. Now he is a finalist for the very same award this season. For the 84th time, Kansas State and Nebraska, and we're underway. And a great kick out of the back of the end zone. So to start things off, Eric Crouch and the offense will work from its own 20-yard line. Eric Crouch coming off a game with a career-high rushing day. Last week, 137 yards and a touchdown in the route over Texas A&M, 37 to nothing. They really put the game together in the second half. There's his numbers from last week. From the 20. Newcomb in motion, and he'll go straight ahead. And the fumble on the first play, and Kansas State's got it. Lamar Chapman. Dan Alexander got popped inside, and the ball came loose on the first play of the game. Nebraska has had problems all season long fumbling the football. In fact, they lead the nation in most fumbles given up. the tackle the big 12 would win the north and be assured of a spot in san antonio for the big 12 championship and a hunt in the bcs or nebraska a win today would give them the head-to-head -head competition advantage over kansas state and if they could beat colorado on thanksgiving weekend they would be the northern representative for the conference crown second down and eight here's allen again hit quickly Got about three. It'll bring up third down and five. Deion Booker from the secondary made the stop. This was the first play of the football game offensively. Nebraska from its own 20, Bob. And this is what Kansas State does so well, and that is create turnovers. In fact, coming into the game, they lead the nation in takeaways and in turnover margin. Third down and five, opening possession for the Kansas State offense trying to take advantage of that turnover we just showed you and here's where Beasley's going to have trouble the crowd is deafening he's trying to change the play and drops to throw on third down fires way over the head of his intended receiver incomplete and so Kansas State's going to have to settle for a field goal attempt Fourth down. Out comes Jamie Ream. And 15 straight field goals is a school record. This would tie the Big 12 record if he hits it from 40 yards. Field goal blocked by Nebraska. So we've had one series of football. A Nebraska fumble gave Kansas State an opening shot at scoring first. But Vandenbosch, who got two a week ago, just stuffed those plans as he blocks the field goal. Well, it's advertised. Two of the top five defenses in the nation have taken control of this game in the first series for each team. 15 straight field goals, but then you've got the Nebraska Block team and the guy that comes over the top, Kyle Vandenbosch, number 83, the junior. He's a kick blocking machine. 
two a week ago, one today, and it gives it back to the Nebraska offense at its own 23. They don't get much from Coral Buckhalter out to the 25-yard line. With Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler. This is the number five and number six teams in the country in front of a record crowd on a midsummer-like day. 84 degrees and sunshine, if you can believe it, on November 13th in Lincoln, Nebraska. And as Bob said, we have been here when the snow's been flying in the booth, the rain's been going sideways. This one, you want to take a picnic to the game. Second top, down and eight. Top coats and top hats and gloves and scarves. <laughs> Here's the option. Crouch is going to keep it. Eric's got the first down. Knocked out of bounds at the 38-yard line, but it's first down, Nebraska. For those of you just joining us, having seen the Michigan-Penn State game, here's what's at stake in the Big 12. Kansas State with a win will win the North Division and be assured of a spot in the conference championship game in San Antonio the first week of December. But Nebraska, if they can win and then take care of Colorado on Thanksgiving weekend, they would win the North, and they'd be heading to Texas for the conference crown. We're just underway, and we've already had a block kick and a fumble. But Nebraska's got a first down to work with. Buck Holder is stopped for no gain. In fact, he lost about two yards. Here's the Chile starting lineup for Nebraska. Jolch and Boak are the tackles, Sherman, and Hookstein are the guards. Rayola, the center, probably their best offensive lineman. Davison, the wide receiver. Newcomb will play wing back and wide out. Wistrom's the tight end. And joining Eric Crouch in the backfield, we've already seen Alexander, who fumbled, and now Buck Holder, who's been in there. And the lead man will be Willie Miller, the fullback, who's in the eye right now. Crouch will keep. And Simino's got him wrapped up, but not before he picks up about three yards. Mark Simino, the All-American candidate for the Kansas State defense that looks like this. Darren Howard leads them in tackles for loss. He'll move inside and outside. Fatafehi, Holloman, and Baisel round out the front four. Simino, who just made that tackle, is a Butkus finalist with Lieber and Litton. The secondary has been strong in the last few years for Kansas State. Really not a difference today. Lamar Chapman has already recovered a fumble. He and Cooper are the captains of the defense with Simino. And Butler and Carter play the corners. That's Phil Bennett, the first-year defensive coordinator for Kansas State. Much traveled around both the Big 8 and then the Big 12. Other places as well, including the Big 10. But he's got this team playing great football again. They're fourth in the country in scoring defense. And Nebraska comes in third in the country in scoring de defense. So as Bob and I talked about earlier, a battle of heavyweights. And we talked about Holyfield and Lewis tonight. They've got nothing on this one, Bob. Well, normally I like to get behind the offense being a quarterback, but this one is dominated by the defenses to the top five in the country. Kansas State needs the turnovers from their defense to help their offense. Exactly what they got on the first possession. They just didn't convert the field goal. Fadafehi was the guy that was shaken up for Kansas State. They help him off the field. Nebraska has a third down and six. Kansas State thinking blitz. They're going to bring it. Crouch. He'll keep it. And he lost the ball on a late pitch, knowing he needed about another yard. The ball goes out of bounds at the 49. If they spot it there, it's a first down. I don't think they'll allow that, though, because the ball was fumbled ahead of time. He's going to move, move, take it back to where he had possession of it. That's what Bill Snyder and Mark Simino are saying to the linesman. Wait a minute now. That was basically a forward lateral, and the coaches are steamed. We get another look at it. That's exactly what they're talking about. Crouch comes down the line, does a nice job, knows he doesn't have the first down. Down and then tosses it, and the ball goes out of bounds. Buckhalter did get a hand on it, but he never had possession of it. And so now, the John Lurie will tell us eventually, our referee, they're saying first down to Nebraska, I guess. Well, Kansas State leads the country yeah. in... In, in taking the ball away, and the Nebraska offense is the worst in the nation in losing fumbles. 16 that includes the one they had on the first possession. That's a bad combination. Yeah, and it's good for Bill Snyder defensively, uh, but it's not good for Nebraska. They have given Nebraska the first down at the 49 of Kansas State. I guess the booing that was going on was for Bill Snyder arguing the call. I think he's got a great argument myself. At any rate, Nebraska is in Kansas State territory. Nice play fake by Crouch. Crossing patterns got his man. It's his tight end, Wistrom. 
And it's a first down, Nebraska, at the 35-yard line of Kansas State as we set it to New York and John Saunders. John. Brad here on the Burger King update. Remember last year, Arkansas almost got Tennessee. Here, Clint Sterner, late in the fourth quarter, 23 yards to Anthony Lucas. Great catch for the touchdown. There's under four minutes remaining, and Arkansas has a four-point lead on number two in the BCS standings. Brad. Wow, does that shake up the SEC that's, if that holds? That's, uh, that's another playoff game for Tennessee. That's they right. lose, they're out. Fullback Willie Miller goes off the left side for a couple. And Mark Simino involved on another tackle. You know, Brad, all the conversation, all the people interested in college football saying, we need a playoff, we want a playoff. If they just wait, <laughs> if they just wait till the season's over with and the uh, championship games have been played, normally it's going to take care of itself. Last year it did with UCLA and Miami and also the Kansas State uh, Big 12 championship game with Texas A&M. It all sorted itself out. Yep. Everybody gets anxious. Second down and eight. Late pitch, Buck Alder, nice open field tackle out there. Nice shot. Carter made the stop, and it's going to bring up third down and long for Nebraska. And, and it's good. The, the conversation, every, you say everybody gets anxious. It's good That's right. for college mm -hmm. football. Uh, it, it, you know, it would not be good if it didn't work itself out. But this system that we have today is much better than the coalition and the alliance. Yep. Every step along the way over the last seven, eight years have gotten better and better, and we're finally getting the one and two team on the field at the end of the year. Tell you what. Every time I walk in my little local pub, somebody's arguing about something. <laughs> it's third down and seven. Crouch with some time going long. Davison got his fingers on it, couldn't hold it. Couldn't have been put in really a better spot, but Davison had a tough time drawing a beat on it over his shoulder. Good play all the way around. Carter was there. Davison ran under the ball. The throw was where it had to be. Looking back, Davison just goes off of his tips of his fingers, and the coverage was there. And, and Bob, that pass, although it was in the perfect place, was a little bit of a duck. It kind of wobbled, and we've got a pretty good wind up here blowing from right to left. That wind just hung it up. Hard for a receiver to make the judgment and make that kind of catch. So it's Hayden fell in to punt. Just going to try to get one out of bounds. I think he got way too much on this one. He did. So well, that'll bring it out to the 20. Not much of a net gain there for Nebraska and Kansas State on offense when we come back. Welcome back, Memorial Stadium. Perfect day for football. Not a perfect start for either one of these teams. Well, it's really. not going to be pretty. Uh, the defenses are going to dominate. That's not to say that there won't be some points scored. They'll generate the points and give good field position for the field goal kickers and the offenses. Here's a second possession for the Wildcats, and it's Allen. Who goes for three or four off the right side as we take a look at the chili starting lineup for Kansas State McIntosh and Barnett at the tackles Moses and Robertson the guards Cummins is their most dependable he's the man calling the shots at the center spot Lockett and Morgan are some big play receivers when they can get it out to him Shad Meyer the tight end and joining Jonathan Beasley the quarterback in the backfield David Allen and Joe Hall and right now Joe Hall the single setback in a three wide receiver group He'll get the call, and the big fella takes it across the 25 to about the 26. Ball is loose. Nebraska's got it. Heading for the end zone. Let's see if they're going to bring it back. It's Tony Ortiz, the linebacker. He got an umpire there with his hand straight up in the air. I think he blew it dead. So instead of Kansas State disaster, it's going to be third down and four for the Wildcats. There's Hall's first carry. Boy, I tell you what, I guess he was down. He really couldn't tell from, yeah. from uh, he was down a long time before the ball came free. Third down and four. Now it's Hall and Allen in a dual backfield and both wide outs to the top of your screen. And Jonathan Beasley takes a timeout and that's going to bring 77,000 to make even yeah. more noise. We'll take a timeout with him with 9-10 remaining first quarter, no score. Nebraska, this stadium, this crowd can get absolutely unruly when it comes to the noise. Bill Snyder has talked to the officials. It is going to be one of the critical areas of this ball game that Kansas State has to control. I have two earpieces to control mine. <laughs> Jonathan Beasley wishes his wide out and his tackles did. Here he is on the keeper, and down he goes. And now you'll hear some noise. Yeah. 
Vanden Bosch and Wills, the two defensive ends, drop him for a loss. You don't want to run sideways on either one of these defenses. They're just so, so much speed laterally, you want to run right at them. Mike Ronsick to punt, and the dual return men you saw there are Joe Walker and Bobby Newcomb. The punting game has not been a good one for Kansas State this year. It's been a sore spot for Bill Snyder, and Nebraska knows it. End over end kick. Takes a bounce in front of Newcomb. He'll take it on the hop. Flags down as Newcomb is on his way. Bobby Newcomb to midfield, and then some. And again, a penalty marker down at the 20-yard line. At 20-yard line, the original line of scrimmage. Let's see if somebody left early. Motion against Kansas State, and that's a declinable penalty, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So Nebraska sure. gets the punt return from Newcomb, and they're in business. Take a look at the Dell Game Solutions, Bob. Yeah, for Nebraska offensively, hold on to the football. They've already put it on the ground once. <laughs> and, and for Kansas State defensively, they got to create field position with takeaways to help their offense. They've already done that. It's, uh, it's going to be key throughout this ballgame. So far, they've both done what you talked about, one in a negative way, one in a positive way. But Bobby Newcomb's 28-yard punt returns put Nebraska in K-State territory again. Crouch to throw. Wistrom. Oh, man, he almost made a one-handed catch. Couldn't quite hold on to it. And Jared Cooper was back there with him. That's a good-looking tight end. He makes those kind of catches sometimes look routine. Well, this is one of the things they wanted to try to do is get Wistrom on the strong safety Cooper. Cooper is an excellent defensive back, but he's better against the run than he is against the throw, the pass. That ball was right on the money. Just good coverage. What a pretty picture of a great attempt by the tight end. They've tried only three passes so far today. They've aimed two of them at Wistrom. Second down at 10. Crouch, quarterback draw. Eric inside the 40, broke a tackle, cuts outside, got to the 35, about a yard short of a first down. He's quick. He is, and that is one of the real dangers of playing Nebraska is Crouch, not only on an option, but on a quarterback draw or a play, a busted play, his ability to run. One of the fastest guys on the team. This is a design quarterback draw. Buckhalter got a nice block on Lieber, the linebacker, to help free him up a little bit. And he had a huge hole to run through, didn't he? The offensive line just moved out the defensive line. Kansas State's only allowed one third down conversion in the last 17 attempts by their opponents. Here's a third and short, and Crouch has got it. Now to the 30-yard line. Last week, Kansas State did not allow a third down conversion to Colorado. 0 for 13. So you go all the way back to the Baylor game. 15 straight times they've held the opposition without picking up the first on a third down situation. But now Nebraska's got a couple here already. Yeah, and the flip side of that last week, Kansas State only made offensively one of 14 on third down. So there was a lot of punting. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> not many long drives on that in that game. 6.35 remaining in the first quarter. Nebraska at the 30-yard line of Kansas State, trying to get on the board first. Crouch from a shotgun, and then takes off behind his blockers inside the 20. Eric Crouch, touchdown, Cornhusker. It opened up like the Red Sea. And before the waves could get back to him, he took it 30 yards for the touchdown. This is just a quarterback sweep. The two guards are going to pull. Crouch takes a counter step to time it up. The receiver on that side took his man deep. He was bump and run coverage. He never saw him coming. Josh Brown in for the point after. And it's up and good. The Cornhuskers on the board first, courtesy of number seven. They lead by seven. Middle 
Got the touchdown from 30 yards to cap a 44 yard scoring drive in just 90 seconds. And of course, Bobby Newcomb's punt return was a big help in that of 28 yards to set it up. Kansas State, Terrence Newman, one of three return man. He's the deep man waiting on Hayden Feltz's kick. That Swanee talked about will make Hayden Felt re tee it. Some of the starters on defense, like Ralph Brown, on this kick team is Joe Walker as well. Brown, one of the seniors that were introduced today. Now we've got it going. At the one is Terrence Newman. And it's Brown at the 20, down the sideline, Brown to the one. We just talked about him being one of the senior leaders, and he's just led Nebraska to the Kansas State goal line. Starting corner on the defensive team, the ball bounces right to him. And he's saying, hey, Kansas State, we can take it away also. That's just good tackling, good physical tackling by Nebraska. And they get the ball on the two-yard line. First and goal, Cornhuskers. Buckhalter breaks a tackle. He's close. Not quite. Fata Fahey on the bottom of that pile, big number 75. They're still all tangled up. It'll be second down to goal. I think I think the, the thing that's jumped out at me right off the hat, bat here, Brad. Wait a minute. A fumble. You talk about a late call on a fumble. I did not see the ball I, come I, loose. I, I didn't, I didn't see the signal either. But that's it's, as long as Kansas State defensively can get on the field, even though if it's a, the one and a half yard line, they've got a chance to take it away. Look at this. That's Chapman. Look, it looks like Chapman was going for it. And there it is. Bob, what happened? The ball came loose in that pile. The officials didn't even see it. And then when they finally looked in there, they had to get confirmation that it was actually a fumble. It did come loose. Allen hit by Mike Brown, stood up after he got about a yard and a half out to the three. So Nebraska has fumbled twice in this game already, but they lead 7-0. They have lost more than half of their fumbles yeah. to today. And that, by, by far, leads the nation in lost fumbles. And, and Frank Soli says, I don't know. I says, I've talked everything about it. I don't know what else to do about it other than just not say anything. So they're not talking about it anymore. They'll be talking about it in town tonight. Beasley, play action from his own end zone. Pumps. They had a hold of him. He got rid of the ball, and it was almost completed to his tight end, Meyer, out near the 20-yard line. Boy, 18 hung in there, six yards deep in his own end zone, and yeah. finally got rid of it. Well, the black shirts, that's what the defense for Nebraska are called. Good pressure there by Kaiser, 91. Vandenbosch, 83. And a late hit there by Johnson. It looked number 27. Beasley did a nice job to avoid the safety in two points. Don't you know Beasley is thinking about it here again now on a third and nine. Well, that's quarterback in your own end zone. Don't take a safety. He's going to roll to throw this time. Good call. And had to throw it into the Nebraska bench. And now... The punting unit of Kansas State, which has been a sore spot for Bill Snyder all year, is going to have one of their kickers backed up to that chalk line. They don't have much room to work. Ronsick comes out. Well, their special teams have been good the last few years, and they're good this year. But as you mentioned, it's the kicking team, the punting team especially, that's ranked 88th in the nation. That's way above what they normally are. Here they come, and it's blocked out of the end zone.
Well, Frank Solich says their punter is a little slow getting it off. And if you're ever going to try and block one, this is the spot where you try and block it. Comes from the right side, right up the middle. Looks like Sella, number 34. He's a freshman, a linebacker that doesn't get to play much. But you want to get rid of that ball as quickly as you can if you're the punter in your own end zone. It's a great effort. Stella with a punt block. Nebraska dominating here early. In a hurry here at Memorial Stadium. Nebraska with a safety on a block punt by Randy Stella. And the brain trust of Kansas State on the sideline saying, we got to slow this thing down a little bit. Well, Osnick had the punt yeah. blocked and it went out of the back of the end zone for the two. As I said, you know, when defenses are this strong and dominate, it's not going to be pretty. It'll be exciting. And there'll be some points scored, but it won't be the conventional way. And now the free kick, Jamie Ream will kick off. Many times a punter would kick this, but the punters are not that good for Kansas State, to be honest with you. The ball blows off the tee in this instance going the other way as well. So Ream, who does have an excellent leg, will kick this away. And Randy Stella and Joe Walker are the two guys waiting on it. Stella, who just made the big play. Ralph Brown had that fumble recovery that took it down to the one. Then a crazy play and a late fumble gave Kansas State the ball. That was the good news. The bad news is they got locked near their own end zone and then had the punt blocked. Green with a kick that's going to bounce at the 20. Stella will take it at the 15. Whew, did he get tattooed at about the 27 yard line? Nice hit on the special teams. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the all-new 2000 Pontiac Bonneville. Luxury with attitude. Burger King, have it your way. National Car Rental, so what are you waiting for? Let's go. And Ameritrade, believe in yourself. Right now, Nebraska is believing. So are their fans. Kansas State wondering a little bit about their start here in the first 10 minutes of this football game. Eric Crouch will line him up. Last time he touched it, he went 30 yards for a score. Drops back to throw on first down. Wistrom's wide open. Cooper knocks him out of bounds, but he's all the way to the 47-yard line of the Wildcats, a pickup of 26. Well, what we were told was that on the left, left side of your screen, 87, Wistrom against Jared Cooper. They like that combination. Wistrom is a big tight end. He's only 220, 25 pounds, so he's not a good heavy blocking tight end, but he's a great receiving tight end. They like that matchup. So right back on the Wildcat end of the field again are the Cornhuskers. They get him off the left side, Diedrich. And he got to about the 43. Cooper made the tackle. Deron Diedrich, the third high back in the setup for Nebraska. 413 left in the quarter. Tomorrow on ESPN AFC West football. Here's Crouch on an option. He broke three tackles and not the fourth. Chris Johnson finally puts him down as he didn't get much on that at all. No gain on the play. It'll bring up. Third down and about seven. Eric Crouch has become the 50th player and the seventh Nebraska quarterback to rush in his career for over a thousand yards. He did that with some style on a touchdown run today. He's got 70 yards on seven carries. And he's a pretty good thrower. He comes in ranked first in pass efficiency in the Big 12. Two tight end set here. He'll throw off play action. Crossing pattern, boy, they got Wistrom all day on that play. Lamar Chapman makes the stop at the big tight end. Tracy Wistrom's got another catch and a pickup of 14. Good protection first off. Wistrom just a crossing route. Gonna cross from our left to the right. Wistrom came in averaging over 32 yards per reception. Because he got three or four passes already here today. Yeah, he's three for 54. And another first down at the 29 of Kansas State. Now Nebraska's in their double wing look for the first time today. And with it, they'll go to the fullback. About three yards for Willie Miller. Fata Fahey 
made the tackle. Fullback twenty-seven. See, it's like throwing a piece of meat to a dog. It does all the work, you know. <laughs> Billy Miller, the fullback. Uh, they've had some great fullbacks around here through the years. They sure have. And some of them have been pretty good runners, but uh, most of the time they do the the dirty work, all the blocking. Second down and eight. With 2.17 left first quarter, 9 nothing Nebraska. On an Eric Crouch touchdown run and a safety on a block punt. Crouch on the pitch. Diedrich trying to get to the corner and Simino won't let him get there. Nice job by the linebacker to knock him out after a pickup of two. And run out let's of check in with John in New York. Brad, here's the run. 9 nothing Nebraska. Wisconsin's got to be kind of excited because with Penn State losing. That's right, they can go the Rose Bowl. They win, they're going. At the 25 yard line. Third down six on the option. Crouch, late pitch, Diedrich lost it, got it on a bounce. Dives. He's short of the first down, but he got awfully close. Down to the 20. Maybe close enough to make this a decision. They're fumbling so many times this year, they're actually getting good at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an option coming down the line. This is their third fumble of the day, but this one they get back. <laughs> That's Bysol, number 44. Diedrich does a little bouncing, dribbling act and gets close to the first down. Just looked like a two guard there. Picked it up on the dribble. And it's fourth down and one. Power eye. They'll go and Crouch has a first down on the sneak. Never a doubt for Nebraska. They just took it. And Crouch went off his center Rayola and Hochstein the guard easy first down Swanee well Brad Nebraska comes in this game against a good Kansas State defense but you know one of the things that Frank Solich told us is that his offense is going to test that defense to find out how good it really was they weren't going to abandon their game plan to try and out trick them I think what they've discovered is they can move it now they're going to stick with their normal game plan and just go after them nose to nose that's what they did in the second half last week against AN. Crouch on play action wide open Wistrom couldn't get there Oh man, he had three <laughs> yards back there on Cooper, and Cooper's celebrating because Wistrom fell down. You're exactly right. He was wide open, and his legs just wouldn't take him there fast. Oh. There he is here. They're just going to do a little corner route off of play action. Take it to him. Look how wide open he is. When you, when you've got a touchdown, my legs are, oh, just keep taking me quick. The thing I'm impressed with Nebraska early is their offensive line. Moving them out on the running game and giving him plenty of time to throw. Second down at 10 at the K-State, 18. Crouch rolls left and throws. High intended for Newcomb, who took a shot in the secondary. Die shot Carter let him know he was there. And it brings up third down and 10. Final 46 seconds of the quarter. Crouch with a touchdown run today. A safety by Nebraska, and they're knocking on the door again. Crouch has, Crouch has thrown the ball seven times. Five have gone to Wistrom. He's caught three of them, and he could have had a touchdown a couple of plays ago. Three out of seven for 54. He's done a better job with his legs than his arms so far. Let's see if he uses the arm again, though, on third down and 10. Nope, it's going to take off. He's got an opening at the 10. Touchdown, Eric Crouch. <laughs> 18 yards, his second touchdown run of the day. said doing a better job with his legs than his arm and he did it again second touchdown rushing his 13th of the year on the ground Josh Brown's extra point is good Nebraska dominating Kansas State in the first quarter quarterback that can run the football is so much more dangerous either on a scramble or a design play watch here now some of these linemen are going to come over here, and as he drops back, there's going to be a huge opening to our left side. He comes through, and there's like a wall that he cuts back and just a shoot into the end zone. Diedrich got a nice block right there on Lieber. And then it 
was easy when you got his speed. You think this group's not fired up? Oh. <laughs> After winning 29 straight going into Manhattan last year and losing 40 to 30. Now they said, yeah, we're going to lose this twice in a row. They're coming to our place. Crouch caps the 73-yard drive in four minutes. Of course, Brad, as you know, Kansas State is one of the big comeback teams of the year. Down 21 points twice this year and have come back to win. And that man right there is well aware of that fact. They were down 21 to Iowa State and won. And... Oklahoma State as well and won both those games so they know they've got to come from behind now. There's David Allen. He's a guy that can change the complexion of a game the first time he touches it if they let him touch it. Yeah. Great punt return and kick return man. Seven touchdowns and punt returns on this season. On his career rather. and he'll get a shot at this one from the four. David Allen. Allen look out. He might take it down the sideline. He runs out of real estate, but he's got it all the way out to the 47-yard line. As we said, in one play, number 32 can change a game. And, and I did the, the Kansas State-Texas game a little bit earlier in the season, and they were down to Texas and not playing well. And David Allen took a punt and ran it back for a touchdown. And as Bill Snyder told us last night, he says, that turned that ball game around. And one of the other ones, David Allen ran one back and turned him around. So. He's trying to do his part to get him going. That's his longest, uh, the longest kick return allowed by Nebraska this year right there. 44 yards out to the 47-yard line. Best spot that K-State's had to have an offensive set since that opening march. And here's Beasley just keeping it. And he might have a first down. I think he does. Jonathan took it. Man out of bounds at the 42-yard line with a first down as we check the Dell game solutions for Kansas State. Bob. Well, they need to produce some big plays. They're not going to take the, the, the offense down methodically, long plays and all that. They need one play, hit a wide receiver down the field, something, big plays. Defensively, they got to get after Beasley. Nebraska defensively, get after pressure the quarterback, get to the heart of that offense and stop it. That was the initial first down of the football game for Kansas State. It comes with 23 seconds left in the first quarter. And a timeout taken again by Beasley. The second one Kansas State has had to use here. And we still haven't expired the first 15 minutes. Timeout. Nebraska 16, Kansas State nothing. Seconds left in the first quarter. And a first down Kansas State. The Nebraska 42. Frank Murphy in motion out of the backfield. Straight ahead is Hall. Going to take a couple guys with him, and the guys he's taking are pretty good size. Warren weighs about the same as Hall. They mix it up a little bit now. Steve Warren about 290. Joe Hall about maybe 285. <laughs> Steve Warren may be singing him a lullaby. He's, just, he's sung at some weddings around town. He's sung the national anthem, so you never know. Right now they're singing the blues in Manhattan, Kansas. First quarters belong to the Cornhuskers. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Nebraska leading 16 to nothing. Kansas State a second and four at the Cornhusker 36 yard line. And now Beasley trying to change the play over the din of the crowd. Hall had to come way up near him to get the change and that's Beasley to throw. Had a man open. Overshot him. It was Lockett who was open at the 30 yard line. So far all Nebraska in this game. Eric Crouch got things going in a hurry capping a 44 yard drive with a 30 yard touchdown run. Randy Stella with Kansas State backed up in their own end zone blocks a punt for a safety and then moments ago Crouch got a great block and took it 18 yards for his second scoring run of the day to cap a 73 yard drive. And that's where we are 16 to nothing Cornhuskers. Third down and four. As Bob said, the Wildcats struggled big time on third down conversions last week. They need this one to kind of get back in the hunt in this thing. Beasley deep drops. Going to go long. Got a man out there. Morgan has it. First and goal, Kansas State at the four-yard line. That's what they've done all year long is live by the big play. 32 yards to Quincy Morgan. 
third and short yardage and they go for the for the big play down the field Morgan's right here he just got to break to the inside single coverage and nice protection look at the time he has to stand in the pocket he almost hung this up too much Morgan had to wait for it if he hadn't waited for it he could have scored a touchdown on the ground Murphy got to about the two you know they don't throw a lot but Beasley second in the country in yards per completion second only to Michael Vick almost 19 yards per completion yeah he's only completing 46 percent of his passes which is last in the Big 12 in completion percentage but he's great in distance throwing and nine of his 12 touchdown passes have been for greater than 32 yards here they just like to jam it in the end zone Hall and Murphy behind Beasley Murphy I don't know got close he got the ball. Oh, the ball is loose Nebraska says they have it did he score before he get the ball came loose Boy, he was right at the goal line when that thing came out of there Vandenbosch is the guy holding the football and what are the officials going to do with this one they have marked it at about the four inch line I think well, we, you know, we talk about fumbles going into the game and turnovers, and nobody can hang on to it. Here it is. Ooh. That's close. Very. That is very close. Looked like Beasley hit. Got there. Touchdown. Boy, did he have to work for that four inches of turf. So Beasley puts Kansas State on the board for the first time today, and they're going to go for two. Well, I don't know. That was very close. Uh, the, the, the play before that, whether or not it, the ball was loose before his knee hits the ground, that's the key. Does his knee hit the ground and then the ball come out? the ground before the ball was out going for two in an empty backfield Beasley rolls to his right with the option to throw had it batted down Steve Warren got a paw on it <laughs> he didn't yet the way he threw it he kind of threw it sidearm Warren, uh, Warren had, had to reach down to knock that one down but Kansas State does get a touchdown they really had to struggle to get in there and they trail now by 10 Beasley about the touchdown by Beasley I guess uh, about a six inch dive caps a 53 yard scoring drive the impressive thing though was Kansas State goes down 16 to nothing and they immediately come back I think that's a testament to Bill Snyder and, and what a great job he's done at this uh, at this school bringing the tradition back uh, this uh, six straight years they've won nine games or more uh, this I think this is the seventh year uh, they've won nine straight. Uh, and just they, 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 there's a toughness, there's a mental toughness, and he just won't let them quit. Randy Stella waiting back on the goal line. Kick taken by Joe Walker. And Walker broke a tackle, hurdles another, and finally sandwiched it about the 38-yard line. Check our Aflac trivia question for this week. Kansas State. Last one in Lincoln in 1968. We talked about that earlier. In that year, which movie won the Academy Award for Best Picture? What was the number one song? And how much were student season tickets? <laughs> you get all of those. You're doing a good job. We were up here guessing the song and the, the movie earlier. Tickets, there aren't any to be had for this one, I'll tell you that much. In fact, they expected a record crowd today, over 77,000. Miller, the fullback. And the ball came loose at the very end of that play, too, but he was blown dead already. If you're going to run the option, you have to give it to the fullback. He has to be a threat up inside every now and then. Wow, Arkansas has beaten Tennessee, so that shakes up the SEC. Florida had to struggle a little bit, but one Alabama leading Mississippi State. Key games all in the SEC for the SEC championship in Atlanta at the Georgia Dome the first weekend of December. Michigan, if you didn't see it, a winner over Penn State. Wisconsin, if they can win that Iowa game in the Rose Bowl. That's all what's going on today. And here in Nebraska, they lead Kansas State. 
Bobby Newcomb, first time he's got his hands on it today, got out to the 44-yard line. Jeremetrius Butler made the tackle. And Frank Solich knows that he wants to get number 12 involved in this Nebraska offense. You look at Bobby Newcomb, they're always aware of where he's at on, mm -hmm. on the football field. Now, that doesn't mean you, you, you stop trying to get him the ball. And uh, we'll continually uh, uh, try to do that. But we've been satisfied, uh, I think, with the, the, the kind of plays that we've had in and some of the opportunities that he's had to get the ball. That doesn't mean they're all going to materialize to where the ball's in his hands. But uh, we'll do the best we can on that. On a double wing, they do the best they can. And Sean Applegate, a former walk-on, rips off 13 yards. First down, Nebraska at the 42-yard line. Second time today we've seen that double wing set. Yeah, I think this is something they used a lot last week against Texas A&M. Double wing right here and here. The difference is right here is a fullback that uh, can run, can block. So they've got the option balanced up. They can go one side or the other. Before, you, uh, you, they were tipping it a little bit. So they balance up, put the fullback in there, and they can run it either way. First down inside the 42. Here's the option. Keeper by Crouch. Crouch dives inside the 35 to the 33. Eight or nine more yards. He's on his way to a 100-yard day. He's got 99 on 10 Mark carries. Mark Seminole on the tackle. Last year, Eric Crouch almost had his head taken off with Nebraska trying to desperately come back in that game. Watch this play. The officials somehow missed that. Oh. Looked like Linda Blair and the Exorcist on this oh. play, and there wasn't a call. Oh, that's, that still hurts me it when does. I look at that. And, and, and I was there doing the game, and it was, uh, it was unbelievable that the referee didn't see it because the, that official, the referee, is just supposed to do nothing but watch the uh, quarterback for uh, late hits and personal fouls and, that inten was, and intentional grounding. Right, that was on a fourth and 16 as Nebraska was trying to come back in that game. And of course, then a late touchdown. Jeff Kelly on a fumble return was the final score, 40 to 30. But the folks in Lincoln and around Nebraska have not forgotten that play, that face mask that was not called. Eric Crouch said, you think that thing didn't hurt? I couldn't even turn my neck in practice for about a week yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And today, he has turned the crowd on. His neck's been fine. He scored two touchdowns on the ground from 30 and 18 yards. And that, with a safety as well for Nebraska, has them the 10-point lead and right now with 11-19 left in the half. And there was a timeout on the field. Give us a chance to remind you next Saturday at noon Eastern. 9 Pacific, ABC kicks off the college football double the best rivalries with abcsports.com at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Nebraska looking to go for about another yard here on second down. Two tight ends set. Diedrich's got it as he gets to the 31-yard line. Lamar Chapman made the tackle. You mentioned a little earlier the Tennessee loss, yeah. uh, talking about the playoff in college football that we're having in November. Uh, Tennessee was ranked second in the BCS poll. These two teams are fifth and sixth, so whoever wins this game, Tennessee was going to drop down. They're going to move up to at least four. Right. Virginia Tech plays tonight against Miami, and they got their hands full. So this whole thing, one of these two teams could be there at the end. Florida did win today. High backfield. Crouch drops back. The throw deep. Overshot. Sean Applegate's what they like to do with that little option drop back game. And Applegate may have had a step back there against I shot Carter, but the throw was long. The BCS standings as things started today. Florida State on top, but Tennessee, as Bob said, is going to slip now. Virginia Tech, a dangerous Miami game tonight. They've gotten Blacksburg, Florida one, so they'll move up. Kansas State and Nebraska both have the opportunity to push forward. And Wisconsin might even end up there in that sixth spot if they can beat Iowa. Who knows? So a lot of football left. For sure. Seventh play of the Nebraska drive. Here's a shovel patch to Diedrich, and he's close to the first down. Got to the 22, needed to get inside the 21. I like that play. It is. It's like an inside option or a shovel pass. The good thing about it is an option. This one you're throwing forward because uh, if you drop the ball that way, it's an incomplete forward right. pass. If it's an option pitching it backward, obviously, it's a fumble. They really used that effectively, especially in the second half against the Aggies last week. Nebraska's five of seven on their third down conversions. Here's a power eye, two tight ends. Diedrich puts his head down. He's fighting for it. And 
and the spot's going to be very, very close to another Nebraska first down. Speaking of Texas A&M, they win in a route today, so credit R.C. Slocum for getting his troops back in gear after getting shut out by this Nebraska team last week. I think they're going to have to take a look at this one. I think he's got it by about three inches, but we're about two miles away in an absolutely gorgeous press box. Huh? I'll tell you that much. Our buddy Keith Jackson had some say <laughs> in how they built this joint. Boy, did they do it right. Ooh, I got bad eyes. Three inches short yep. instead of by, made by three, but, but we got a, got a great announce booth. Uh, Keith Jackson came up here and showed him how to do the table and the uh, the baskets to hold the monitors. And the best thing he did. If he hasn't left a big enough legacy in college football, he told him that you need a restroom in the booth. And there's a sign right in back of us saying the Keith Jackson Memorial Biffy. <laughs> I've been in there twice already to meet Keith, and I was yelling, whoa, Lily, and nobody could hear me. It's soundproof. Here's a fourth down at inches. They converted a fourth and one earlier in this football game. Crouch does it again. So Nebraska keeps the drive going, leading by 10. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford F Series. The best selling trucks are built for tough. ATT one rate, seven cent plan. One simple rate all day, every day. Budweiser, made with a freshness, all natural ingredients for brewery fresh taste and Nicoderm CQ, the power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. There's a statue of the black shirts outside Memorial Stadium. The black shirts, the name given to their defense back in the 60s when Bob Devaney wanted to distinguish between his starters and his second team people. There's another fumble. Bobby Newcomb on a pitch on a trailer will lose about four yards. That's something new. Bobby Newcomb uh, in, in as an eye back and getting the pitch uh, from the quarterback. Uh, he's played every way. He's going to be the wide receiver, uh, wing back, tailback, wherever. There have been some fumble problems today, without a doubt, like the first play of the ball game had happened. That one scooped up by Chapman, and then down close. We didn't even see this one. It was at the bottom of a late pile, and Kansas State took over. And now another one that was harmless, but does present them with a second down and 14. Stiff arm got back to the original line of scrimmage at the 20 yard line. That's the same play that they scored on. It's the quarterback sweep just going the other way. Didn't get the, quite the results that they got the last time. Frank Solders talked to us about all his fumble problems his team's had this year. The thing that we have are backs that, that really battle for uh, yards after contact, and you're more vulnerable. Uh, with that because once you get hit and once you're striving for the yards after contact the second or third guy that comes in usually try to strip the ball so uh, we need to once we get into that contact make sure we're covering up really well on the ball and of course some of it is just being in the right place at the right time if you drop one that's happened to him once today but it hasn't over the course of the season third down 11 crouch pressure for the first time he got hammered he got the ball to Wistrom inside the 10 he's got a first and goal crouch Got level as he let go of that ball, but on third and 11, he finds Wistrom for 14. I don't know how to get rid of this football. I don't either. I think the, the, the helmet uh, incident last week may have helped him. Last year may have helped him. <laughs> Crossing around here. Here's Wistrom. He's just going to go down and cross, and the ball's going to be right there. Crouch does a great job of just buying a little bit of time and then just throwing it to a safe area. Kansas State looked like they had a turkey for Thanksgiving and each grabbed a wing and he somehow got the ball there. It's first and goal. And now he rolls behind a convoy. Going to be brought down after a pickup of only one. Chris Johnson is out there. Draped all over him, the junior. And Nebraska. And the red zones had some trouble with those fumbles as well. They had a couple against Texas, but uh, there's what they've done. Ten turnovers in the red zone. And 36 of 49, only 27, 27 touchdowns when you've been in there 49 times in all those turnovers. That is not good. Yep. They had two inside the 15 against the Longhorns in their only loss. And they put one on the ground at about the Kansas one yard line. So they don't want to drop one here. Another opportunity to put a little space between themselves and the fifth ranked team in the country. They lead by 10. 14th play of the drive so far, and Eric Crouch says, I think he'll talk this thing over on the sideline. Timeout, Nebraska. 
You know, and a lot of these fumbles are not coming for an option team on the toss. Right. They're just guy carrying it and fumbling the football. Outside the four, Willie Miller, touchdown, Corn Husker. Well, I've said earlier, you got to throw him a bone once in a while. And Willie Miller, the fullback, doesn't carry it much, but he just carried it four yards for a Nebraska touchdown. Well, there's quite a tradition around here of uh, fullbacks. Willie Miller is uh, one of the, uh, in the line of the long line of uh, really good fullbacks here. Just a junior getting his first opportunity to play. His second touchdown rush of the year. And now Josh Brown for the point after. High snap. Oh, that's a uh, two-point conversion by Frankie London. Nice call there. Nice call. Surprise. Good play. You got Frankie London in. You work on these plays in practice, and you don't get an opportunity to run them, but it's a nice call by Frank Solich. You got to pull the trigger and go with it. And the players execute. 62-yard scoring drive. Nebraska converted a fourth and one and a third and 11, and Willie Miller took it four yards to score. They lead 24 to six following the two-point leap by Frankie London for the conversion. Morgan and Allen waiting on the kick. Nebraska has now scored on three of their last four possessions, all touchdowns. Bill Schneider, his team a winner in this game a year ago, and now in a deep hole already before halftime. Hayden Feltz kick. Good one. Allen won't have a shot at it. Out of the back of the end zone. Our Athlock trivia question earlier, Kansas State last one here in Lincoln in 68. What movie won the Academy Award for Best Picture? Oliver. Man, that must have been a bad year for movies. <laughs> Student season tickets, 10 and a quarter, tossing and turning. Bobby Lewis. <laughs> Bobby Lewis tossing and turning. That was the number one song. That's what Bill Snyder's going to be doing in bed tonight if his team doesn't get in gear. At the 20. You look pretty good there, hey, partner. Beasley on the give. Frank Murphy got about two. 7.45 now remaining in the half. And Kansas State needs to come from out of a hole. Vandenbosch got up limping a little bit. He's already blocked a field goal again today. That's what started all this. Nebraska fumbled on its first snap offensively and then held Kansas State to a field goal attempt. And a guy that had hit 15 straight had a field goal blocked by Vandenbosch, and things just started running red after that. Second down and eight on the ground again. Murphy, and he's going to be close to a first down on the run. Speaking of on the run, how's Ron Dane doing? Let's check in with John Saunders. In Madison, Ron Day, number one all time. Brad. Congratulations as well. We've seen big Ron Dane for four years and seen so many special moments. None more special than that to do it at Camp Randall Stadium. We had him for 220 plus against Purdue last week. And as I said, he just kind of smiled when I said, Wouldn't it be nice to do it at home? And he said, It would be kind of cool in front of the student body. Well, yeah. He got it, and our congratulations to Ron Dane, now the new king of the hill in the rushing record books in college football. Here, Kansas State fighting back. Outside the 47, they've got a first down. Got a little quick opening draw, but nothing to open there. There's a nice play by Eric Johnson, the outside linebacker, drops Murphy for no gain. What the Cats are doing with Frank Murphy, he's got a lot of speed. He's had some injuries with his ankle. They're running him straight up. The last two or three plays, he's just run inside. This time there was nothing there, but uh, they want to run him inside because straight ahead is, is where he is not affected by that ankle sprain. Well, they had that surgery on that ankle, and he put a pin in it, but I watched him in pregame warm-up. He looked extraordinarily sound, and I had a gut feeling that they would get him in this ball game because of his speed, his elusiveness, and his size, now, Bob. He, he can make some plays. They're going to need him, and then some. Beasley in trouble. Throws, safety valve is Murphy. Here he goes. 
down to the 40-yard line. First down, pick up of 13. There's just tremendous presence of mind, Jonathan Beasley, to hang in there. Looks downfield, he's got somebody at his feet. Jason Lohr almost got to him. There you see it from ground level. Coverage there, stays, keeps alive, stays awake, knows where his receivers are, and then allows Murphy to get it upfield. That's only the sixth reception of the year for Murphy, but it's a big one. Now it's David Allen. Allen only got a, about a yard. And it was Lohr who was putting on that pass rush that made the tackle. David Allen, all the speed and all the things we talk about, his punt return capabilities, but he struggles a little bit in the backfield. Yeah, he's not as dangerous from the, from the line of scrimmage as he is uh, kicking off uh, on kickoff returns or punt returns. You get him in the broken field, uh, an open field, and he's dangerous. You might throw him the football out of the backfield. That would get him uh, in space. Now they go to a three wide receiver set, change the play at the line of scrimmage. Beasley lines him up at the 39 of Nebraska. And they'll just get it inside. And only about a yard as Nebraska's defense has not given much to Allen. Tomorrow on ABC, the ISU Grand Prix. Of, we're skating right along in the second quarter. Only four minutes left in the half. 24 to 6, Nebraska. A third and eight. Beasley. Well, he had a lot on it, but nobody near it. Quincy Morgan, I guess the intended receiver. And Beasley's got to scrape himself off the turf. And they'll punt it away here. Or it looks like they, they're giving us the appearance that they're going to. He's still playing the field position game, and there is no quit in Bill Snyder. They've come from behind before. His last punt was blocked, remember, but he was in his own end zone. Ronsick's got more room to work here. Joe Walker waiting on it at the 10-yard line. Bobby Newcomb is going to drop back there with him, try to keep this one out of the end zone, maybe get a play on a return. Oh, man, they got close again. Brown almost blocked it. Newcomb will take it at the 12, spins, and goes down at about the 17-yard line. Our game summary in this one. Eric Kraft from 30 yards out got Nebraska on the board first. And then Ronsig had the punt blocked by Stella for the safety. It was 9-0. Eric Crouch, an 18-yard run here for his second score of the day, made it 16-0. Kansas State's Beasley, a one-yard dive to keep him in the hunt. But then Willie Miller took it four yards right up the middle. That's where we are at 24-6. And Nebraska's got it back at its own 17-yard line with 3.44 left. They have only one timeout remaining here in the half. Eric Crouch's numbers pretty impressive over 100 yards and two scores on the ground and as we said has become the fifth Nebraska quarterback with over a thousand yards rushing and here he goes for about 10 more got taken out on the sideline over there and like he maybe took a coach with him Cooper made the tackle might have taken the coach with him was it Frank that went no, down no, he, he got out of the way he's been around those sidelines <laughs> a long time this is his second year as a head coach, 19 years as an assistant. He knows enough to get out of the yeah, way. And he used to, and he was a fullback here before that, so he knows those sidelines. 115 yards for Crouch and two touchdowns. Frank Solich, who likes to work out and stay in shape and still is, but his wife says he bought a set of weights. He hasn't used them all year. That's how much time he's put into this football team. Play action, Crouch from behind. Down he goes. Darren Howard comes storming around the corner, and he's the guy that can really put some pressure on the outside for the Wildcats. And he's used to sacking quarterbacks. He is the career sack leader at uh, Kansas State. He now has 29 in his career. Number 49. Well, that's unfair, having a back try to block a defensive end. Yeah. He'll take that matchup any day. He plays all over the place. Got a couple interceptions this year, too. Very rangy on the outside. They move him inside at times. Yep. In fact, he returned one of those interceptions for a touchdown. Senior out of St. Petersburg, Florida, has put Nebraska in a second and long. Crouch will keep it anyway. Out to the 35-yard line. Picked up nine more. Eric Crouch, who had over 100 yards on the ground last week 
And 22 carries for 108 yards in this game last year, and way past that already here in the first half. At halftime, it's a Valvoline halftime report. John Saunders and Terry Bodden will be along. Scores and highlights from across the country. Michigan's beaten Penn State. Arkansas, a winner over Tennessee. Florida survives. Virginia Tech plays tonight. Ron Dane's a new record holder. There's all kinds of cool stuff going on today. Things are changing at the top. Crouch with time and ran out of it. Is the ball loose? They're going to blow it dead. At the 30-yard line, Howard again came storming around that corner. And Crouch is saying, I was throwing it. And the officials are agreeing, but it's still a punting situation. So Howard had a great defensive series there. He did, and he wasn't working on jolts. He was working on the back again. I think it was Willie Miller. Galde, uh, the tight end, was over there, too. So Hayden felt the punt. David Allen says, just give me a chance. They'll try to keep it out of his hands, obviously. Only guy in history to return punts for touchdowns in three straight games. He might have a chance, but it's a great kick. Nope's got to let it go. Well, he just played the averages. That thing was going to go inside the 10, and he didn't want to hear it from Bill Snyder on the sideline. A 65-yard punt, and Kansas State will work now from their own 20-yard line. They trail 24 to 6 here at Memorial Stadium in front of what might be indeed a record crowd today, the 233rd straight sellout. Eric Crouch, a couple of touchdowns, a safety on a block punt, and Willie Miller, the fullback, for a score. The only touchdown so far for Kansas State is Jonathan Beasley, their quarterback, sneaking it in from less than a yard out. Kansas State has one timeout remaining before the break. Here's Murphy trying to cut back run. He ran right back into the same guy that hit him the first time. Bosch. Vanden Bosch <laughs> tried to bosh him in the backfield and then stuck with it and made the tackle. That's just, uh, if, you, if you stay alive and be alert, maybe the guy will come back your way, and that's what he did. <laughs> Vanden Bosch, I remember the first time I saw him, we said to Charlie McBride, this kid looks like he's going to be good. And Charlie just kind of raised his eyebrows and said, he's going to be really good. And he has been. Now junior, 270-pounder. Drops. Murphy for only a one-yard gain. It's second down and nine. Nebraska shows blitz, backs out of it. Now they come with some heat. And Beasley trying to get it out to lock it and couldn't lock it. Single coverage out there with Keo Craver on a crossing pattern. Yeah, well, they had what they wanted, and that is uh, single coverage in the secondary. They just couldn't find him. Nebraska had some pressure on Beasley. And the pressure has made him struggle statistically. Beasley only two of eight uh, passing, as we mentioned. He, he's not a big percentage guy as right. far as uh, completions are concerned. Remember that one completion was the long one down to Quincy Morgan that got him close to the end zone. Murphy will be the single setback. Three wide outs as George Williams joins Morgan and Lockett. And they're going to keep it on the ground, and Murphy spins in that backfield, broke a tackle, and as Swanee said, he looks pretty good. Yeah. Pickup of 11. Wisconsin looks like they're on their way to the Rose Bowl. Still a half a football to go there, but they lead 27 to 3. Will Snyder likes to keep uh, his practices closed. He doesn't like to give out a lot of injury reports, but uh, this guy looks like he's pretty healthy. He doesn't have any knee and ankle problems. Not a 4-2 speed guy, and he showed some of it there, and they try to get it out to him in a pass pattern, and he got hammered by Julius Jackson in coverage. Georgia Tech survives Clemson, 45-42. Joe Hamilton had a big day, five touchdowns and 88 yards on the ground, so he's not going to just hand that Heisman Trophy to Ron Dane, I don't guess. That's for sure. be interesting, the votes from where they come, and uh, the Midwest, you would think, would be Dane heavy. Joe Hamilton probably in the South. I would think, though, with, uh, with Dane passing, surpassing all those other guys and those other four guys having won the Heisman, yep. that, that will influence uh, a lot of the voters. No doubt about it. Second down and 10. We've got a minute and a second remaining in the half. Beasley from the shotgun. And did too it much. take too much time? Yeah. The noise was getting to him a little bit. They were trying to get set, change things up. And now instead of second and 10, it's going to be second down and 15. That's the first penalty of the game against Kansas State. 
And the one decline penalty earlier on the punt situation. Kansas State had almost 100 yards in penalties last week, yeah. and that was something that was irking Bill Snyder. Yeah. And they're the most penalized team in the Big 12 this year. It just, uh, you just, you just can't stop yourself, especially on offense. If some of those penalties come on defense and they're aggressive, yeah. you can put up with that, but not offensively. It stops your drives. They'll work from the gun again. Second and 15. Slip screen. Got it on the run to Quincy Morgan. Morgan across midfield. One man to beat. They're going to drag him down, but not before he got to the 18-yard line. Deion Booker saved a touchdown. Morgan gets those wheels turning, and it's hard to stop him. Averaging over 22 yards a catch, and he got 55 on this one. Yeah, they call this the jailbreak screen, and this was Charlie McBride, defensive coordinator, saying yesterday they wouldn't like this one. And intended on a slant for Quincy Morgan. Way high and deep from Beasley. And there aren't many defensive coordinators that do like that play, right. and the reason is is because the offensive linemen can go downfield and, and throw their blocks, and the guy you could throw a pass, a forward pass, it just has to be behind the line of scrimmage. If they had that rule in the National Football League, there'd be a hundred of those thrown today. Oh boy, would there ever. Yep. Only 43 seconds left. Timeout situation. Kansas State has won. This would be a big score if the Cats can get in here. Would it ever? And second and ten, Beasley. Drops, wants to throw back to the right. Now he's got some heat and trying to throw it away. Almost that, intercepted that was by a, Ralph Brown. It was a bad decision by Beasley. His first, second, and third uh, choices were covered, and he just turned and threw it to the corner and didn't even look. Almost found number 22 as his intended receiver, yeah. but it was a wrong color jersey. The red jersey, exactly. He rolls to this side. He wants to throw back. It was the design play to throw back. And then he, before he threw it this way, he didn't even look. <laughs> That's a blind toss there. Third down and 10 at the 18. They want something out of this drive before halftime. Lock it in motion. They're going to throw it, try to do the same thing to Morgan. He dropped the ball. They tried the same uh, jailbreak to screen and uh, didn't connect on it. Now they pretty much got to go for three here, don't they? 31 seconds left. They're talking about it. And here they come. They'll bring out the field goal unit. There was some conversation. That guy has the final say. And he says, let's get three before the break. But remember, Jamie Ream, who had hit 15 straight, had his first one blocked today by Vandenbosch, who's got three in the last two weeks. So watch out for where number 83 will be coming from. He's right behind the right upright, I think. 35-yard attempt. Uh-uh. He got it, but not by much. Kind of an ugly kick. Almost had it stuffed again, but he got it through with 25 seconds left in the half. So that quiets the crowd momentarily, but they have seen Nebraska pretty much dominate the first half of this football game. Big 12 North is at stake here today with Kansas State in the driver's seat, but they've got to come from behind to win this game. If Nebraska wins, and right now they lead 24 to 9, they would have to go to Colorado and win that game, and then they know they would be the Northern representative for the Big 12 championship game in San Antonio against Will It Be Texas. Well, Texas and Texas Tech played tonight, and Texas Tech, after some early rocky goings and some booing against. Spike, they're right back in the hunt too. They can win out and win the South, so it's kind of crazy right now. If they could beat Texas tonight and win the next the rest of the games, uh, they would go. Reem, who just hit the field goal, set the kick. Nice kick. Stella, five yard deep, will not bring it out. So Nebraska leading 24 to 9, courtesy of their quarterback and their defense, Eric Crouch. 81 yards in the air at 121 and two touchdowns on the ground, including a 30 yarder where nobody got a hand on him as he took it in. And an 18 yarder, much the same. A cutback, a great block. Part of his two touchdowns rushing today and going over 1,000 yards rushing 
in his Cornhusker career at quarterback. Earlier in the year, it was uh, he was not named the starting quarterback. No. Uh, Newcomb was the starter, and uh, and they played. Both of them played, and uh, Bobby Crouch uh, started doing better. And uh, Newcomb went to wide receiver, and it's been a good thing for the Cornhuskers. Seminole mm -hmm. levels Crouch after a pickup of about three. Number 42 is always going to be around the football. Boy, he's a good one. He is. He's led this team in tackles for three years. He's been a captain ever since his sophomore season, and. Uh, He's just an outstanding player. And he's going to, I'm sure, try to fire up his defensive teammates in the locker room at halftime because Nebraska's owned the first half at home. 24 to 9, the halftime score. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Over 460 total yards. Eric Crouch, a good game. David Allen, a long fumble return by Brown, but Crouch was dumped. Kansas State was pumped. Crouch was almost decapitated. And then the goalposts were. Down they came at Kansas State to end 40 years of frustration against a Nebraska team. But a different story today. Frank Solich has said, we're not out for revenge. I think maybe his football team thinks a little bit differently because they've taken it to Kansas State today. And now Bill Snyder knows he's got to dig himself out of a hole 24-9 at halftime. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. Kind of a weird first half. A lot of balls on the ground all over the place. Big plays by both defenses. But Nebraska's got control right now. But Kansas State's been in this situation before. They've been down big at halftime, 21 points twice this year. They have the confidence to come back because you've done it before, and, and Bill Snyder's going to try and get them there. Nebraska, just keep on doing what you've been doing. There's two big play performers, one on defense, one on special teams. They're still trying to get David Allen freed up a little bit. He had a 44-yard kick return earlier that gave them a spark. They're going to need more than a spark now. They're going to need at least a fire, if not an inferno, in the second half. Down 24-9. to nine. Hayden felt the kick. Allen draws a bead at the two. Return set up to the left. Across the 20. Look out. 30. Got a block. David Allen at midfield and out of bounds. At the 45-yard line, make it the 44 of Nebraska. There you go. 54-yard return to start the third quarter. He's doing all he can do. And Frank Solich knows how dangerous he is. You have to kick it to him. You can't kick it out of bounds on the kickoff. A great way to start the second half. I'm sure that Snyder talked about this. Let's go out. Chapman's getting the block. There was no place else for him to go. Had it not been that Ralph Brown was the guy trying to stay there and shove him out of bounds, he probably would have been gone. Brown played the angle just enough to get him out at the 44. Beasley now. Going deep down the middle, just overshot Aaron Lockett. Lockett had a half step on Brown. Yeah, and you're only going to get so many chances on these big plays. The first play of the second half, Bill Snyder and his staff, Ron Hudson, the offensive quarter, do a great job of adjusting to what they see. And that was, he was open. He had a, he had a couple steps on him. And you're only going to get so many shots at making big plays. So second and 10, trying to take advantage of the kick return. Murphy, the single setback, trips to the right side. Three wide outs for Beasley at the 44. But he'll option back the other way. Keeps it. Goes down at about the 41. Steve Warren makes the tackle. Let's check in with Swanee. Brad, I talked to Bill Snyder, and he said the two things that concerned him most about the first half was the quarterback for Nebraska on the option and the tight end coming so open. He said these are the two things we're going to have to make some adjustments on, and he felt like he made those adjustments. I asked about Frank Murphy. He said he'll play more in the second half because he's been running hard. Now, keep in mind, Frank Solich understands that, and when I talked to him, he said, we're very pleased with how we played the first half, but we have to keep after him because Kansas State is a relentless football team. We need to score more points and continue to be effective. That's what Bob was saying they've been in this predicament before Beasley on third and long and he's in a predicament right now has to throw it away and it's going to be intentional grounding he had all kinds of heat from Aaron Wills and Eric Johnson and then he dumped it behind one of his linemen I'm sure that's going to be the call and it is Spot foul. Loss 
of down. Spot foul and loss of down. It's not as serious if you're an offensive team. It's not a serious penalty. The biggest thing from last year's game, you saw the highlights. There's no Michael Bishop yep. playing quarterback for Kansas State today. Well, there went their spark after the kick return. Yeah. Now it's fourth down, and they're punting. Joe Walker waits. And Mike Ronsick, who had one stuffed in his own end zone, sees that there's nine guys a little bit hungry at the line of scrimmage. Nebraska can run these punts back, too. Now they drop off and take the punt block away, trying to set up the return. Not a good kick. But Newcomb will take it out of the bounce at the 15. Newcomb dances his way to the 19-yard line, a four-yard punt return. And they'll take over the Cornhuskers, that is, at their own 19 as we take a look at the Morgan Stanley Dean Witter first half statistics. Look at that rushing yardage and a lot of that Eric Crouch, Bob. You got that right. And uh, the first down's 14. The turnovers, two for Nebraska. Time of possession in Nebraska's uh, favor. Nebraska had six fumbles in the first half alone <laughs> and only lost two of them. So here's Crouch, the guy of the day so far. Over 100 yards on the ground and two touchdowns in that first half. Bobby Newcomb in motion. All the way across the field. <laughs> Looked like he doesn't know where he's going. Gonna be a lead blocker here, I guess. Diedrich comes out close to a first down run. He's been kind of the horse as the eye yeah, back. They had I, Alexander and Buckhalter both put it on the ground. I think we're seeing something right there is a good key. Uh, Buckhalter and Alexander have been playing most of the year. Both of those guys are uh, older. They're two, both juniors. Diedrich, I think maybe uh, uh, Frank Sola just said, well, you know, we're giving it to those guys. Let's see if Diedrich can get it done. I think he's going to get an opportunity here to win this job. He got 10 there. So Darren will stay in at the tailback spot at the 29-yard line. <laughs> on the option. Crouch broke one tackle. Puts his head down and runs into Lamar Chapman, but he got about seven more yards. Eric Crouch, a determined quarterback today. Phil Bennett told us, uh, the defensive coordinator, that the things they needed to do was stop the option and no big plays, and they have not done that. Crouch has gained 132 yards running from the quarterback position, mostly on options, and uh, they've hit the tight end for several big plays that set up touchdowns. Second down and two coming up. Backfield now behind Crouch. Gives to the fullback Miller. And Willie, who had a touchdown earlier, has a first down this time at the 42. Cooper and Simino make the tackle. You know, we were talking with Simino about the quarterback of Nebraska, Eric Crouch, and he had some high praise for number seven. Assignment sound. I mean, everybody has to be in their right spot, and you got to get up blocks, and, and you got to just continue to pursue the football. It's going to be tough. You know, Eric Krause, he's, he's a speedster. And, uh, you know, he's going he's gonna to make some things happen. We just got to, you know, make sure we recover from it and uh, just keep playing hard football. They're still trying to do that. Crouch throwing. Not quite for Applegate. Had him open. Applegate got turned around and his head on a swivel. Not a good throw there. He was wide open. They have had some guys come open today, especially Wistrom, the tight end. Bobby Newcomb with Frank Solich on the sideline. Well, when you've got the running game going, you can do so many things. Applegate's going to just come and go across the field, and he'll be wide open. You'll stop it right here. You'll notice that he's wide open. All the receivers over there had two guys to choose from. Wide receivers haven't caught a pass today. Six completions for Nebraska, four to the tight end and two to the running backs. Here's Crouch as a running back. Out to the 48. He got five, it'll be third and five. Good call by the head coach. If, you know, if, uh, if it's working in the first half, keep on running it till they stop it. And talking with Frank yesterday, he said one of, the, one of the fun things about the job is he still gets to call the plays. Now, when you're the head coach and the offensive coordinator calling the plays, that means you have to watch a lot of tape to know when to call these plays at the right time. That's why he hasn't used that weight set down in the basement. That's right. Not enough time. Third and five. Trying to throw a screen. Batted in the air. Crouch caught his own pass. Shouldn't have done that. Nope. Goes down at the 
three yard line. Well, he gets an attempt and a completion, but he also lost about 10 yards. <laughs> yeah, you get a minus 10 yards. That's right. <laughs> Holloman got a paw on it. Uh, it's hard to tell quarterbacks when, when, the, when the ball gets knocked up like this, don't catch it, knock it down, because they're, they're so competitive they want to catch it and run somewhere. Just knock it to the ground. So fourth down, Allen waits on the punt, averaging 14-3 coming into this day. Don't hold on. He has don't to clear everybody me. out of the way. It's going to bounce out of bounds as they try to keep it away from him, and in doing so, it goes out at the 25-yard line. Great job there. So Kansas State got the ball back, but they trail 24-9 when we return. Nebraska ranked sixth, leading fifth ranked Kansas State. 24 to 9 with 10.37 left third quarter. Husker fans are enjoying it and standing for their defense, which has been outstanding today. First down, K State from its own 25. It's hard to check off. You take a risk of not everybody here in the play. David Allen trying to cut back, and Carlos Polk won't let him. No gain. Polk. Came in as one of the top tacklers on this team at 10 tackles last week, and I went over AM. and And he is a player. Yep. He's 250 pounds. He's the middle linebacker, and he is, uh, you know, this, this defense has three linebackers, but the other two are kind of a strong safety size. Right. And they can run like corners. The only real size of a, a, a linebacker size is Polk in the middle. Here's Beasley from the gun. Polk is up there close as though he might come with a blitz. He doesn't. Beasley's still in trouble. Got hammered as he threw, and it's incomplete. It's third down and 10. Beasley's wondering where all the bullets are coming from. He's three of 16. He hasn't completed a pass in his last six. Yeah, let's go ahead and start this, and I'll show you a little bit later in the route. Look down field, and I'll, if you stop it right there, Look at, there's nobody open. There's two receivers there. Nobody is open there. There's nobody to throw it to. A lot of space because they had a blitz on. Polk was up in the line covering the back. Quincy Morgan and Lockett to the near side. Three wide receiver set. He's looking that way and throws high intended for Morgan. Incomplete. Ralph Brown was covering. And Kansas State's got to give it back on a three and out. And well, this, the defense did its job. They did, and this is this is the Kansas State offense this year. It is it is a lot of misses and a few hits. They are not. They don't take the ball down the field. They can't uh, take it 30, 40, 50, 60 yards. They want big plays. Bobby Newcomb waiting on Rotsick kick. Kansas State's been held without a first down on five of their eight possessions. That's defense. Now they've got nine guys up. Let's see if they bring the heat. They got a piece of it. I don't know how he missed it. I think it hit him in the side. It went out of bounds. He overran it. Craver, as Bob said, went too deep, and I think that ball hit him in the side as he was flying by. He could have tackled the putter. He just forget about the ball. Second block punt of the day. Craver flying in. Nebraska's got it back when we come back. teams have been today a block field goal by Vanden Bosch a block punt by Stella another deflection a moment ago Frank Solich troops set up shop at the 37 of Kansas State here's the toss end around coming they fake it Diedrich keeps it they had Newcomb coming around from the other side but only about a yard gain Cliff Holloman made the tackle that's the 52nd play the total plays for Nebraska 31 of them have been run in Kansas State territory wow. We talked about field position. That's field position. Yeah. And the special teams have, uh, have set it up for Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Second and nine. Nebraska leading with just over nine left in the third quarter. Crouch on the option. Got a nice block. Pitch is late. Adrian lost it out of bounds. Penalty marker down. I think it's going to be holding against Darren Howard. But that is why, you know, you've got to take care of the ball for Nebraska. I mean, all these fumbles that they've been having, sometimes you, 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 you make bad decisions. 
There's the hole. Trying Nebraska. to get something that isn't there. Yeah. yeah. First penalty on Nebraska, and I think it was holding Adam Jones out heads. there holding. Spot foul. Ten yards, repeat the down. Bob, Bob and Brad, you know, on that option, I've learned over the years that there's always supposed to be a relationship between the pitch man and, and the guy who's going to get the ball. Mm -hmm. It's about five yards deep and maybe about three yards to the outside in front, so he can pitch that ball out and make it an easy grab. So far today, Eric Crouch has been playing wonderful football, but on his choices about that option, I think he pitches the ball too hard, and he's not making smart decisions. Well, the other thing, Lynn, is the guy he pitched it to then was a true freshman. He's probably only been in, uh, been around for a few months, and he needs to get that relationship with the quarterback. Second and 19. Here's a screen to Newcomb, and Bobby Newcomb in the open field brought down by Travis Littner. Talking about great players, John Saunders has an update on another one. John. Well, Brad, a couple of great players hooking up now. Down at 16 with 8-19, left third quarter. Newcomb out of the backfield, and Crouch drops to throw. Looks that way, going deep down the sideline for him, just off his fingertips. At the goal line, and a flag flies in. Jared Cooper was there with him, number 40. A well-thrown ball, almost caught by Newcomb, and the penalty's going to be on Cooper. One of the things that uh, Nebraska was going to try to do was motion. I don't know. I didn't see it there. Let's take a look here. I think he gets him with a right hand right at the last second. All right there. Oh, yeah. Right, the face mask. Yeah, that's a good call. He hit him just as soon. But, but one of the things they want to do is get Newsom out of the backfield, motioning on Jared Cooper. The strong safety. That's. So they actually call a face mask, not a pass interference. Well, there definitely was a face mask there. Well, whatever. It was going to be uh, marked off from the previous line of scrimmage, whether it was uh, pass interference or face mask. So five-yard walk-off. Frank Solix wants an explanation from the headlinesman over there. They spotted at the 38-yard line, and I think the crowd here is agreeing with their head coach. How come it wasn't pass interference and why just a five-yard incidental face mask? At any rate, still third down. But but the guy that the, the Huskers are going after in that secondary is the safety, Jared Cooper. They've been picking on him today. With, with Wistrom, the tight end, and although that time with, uh, with, the, with the speedy Bobby Newcomb. Wistrom's been quiet since the first half. Crouch throwing deep for Newcomb. Just off his fingertips, it would have been a touchdown. And I think Bobby might be a little disappointed in himself. He stretched out, got his hands on it, just couldn't hold it. Yeah, he was. Uh, he had a step on him. A couple of a uh, couple of more weeks, and these two guys may get this down. It's tough to move from quarterback to a wide receiver. Number 32, David Allen. Just off the gloved hands of Bobby Newcomb. Hayden fell to punt. Yeah, and I'm sure Bobby would tell you, you know, I, I, I should have caught that ball. Yep. David Allen, they're not letting him touch it today. I don't blame him. They kick this one out of bounds, and it goes out at about the 15-yard line. The reason they're trying to keep it out of David Allen's hands, he's got seven career punt returns for a touchdown. I think I remember a guy that played in a red jersey, Swanee, that did that same thing. Yeah, there was a guy here at Nebraska named uh, Johnny something or Rogers. Is, is that who you are? That's me, Swanee. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. David right. Allen's out here. I mean, that ball comes punting out of bounds. They used to punt to you that way. Oh, they have to. I think that if we're going to successfully win this football game, we best keep kicking them out of bounds. Uh, David is tenacious. He means to score every time he touches the ball. We hate to even kick it to him on kickoffs. Okay, now there's a guy on the Nebraska side, Bobby Newcomb. They're talking to him about, like, he's going to be the new Johnny Rogers of this football team. Well, Bobby's a lot stronger, faster, and, and things have progressed so. I, th I think he has a chance really to be able to be one of our best players ever. And he's got to catch 143 passes to break your career record. That's not very many. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, you thank, 200, you. Did you? <laughs> thank you, John. The option to Murphy, the trailer, out at about the 20-yard line. How good was Johnny Rogers? How about a Heisman Trophy winner? And how about the game of the century in 71? And as always in those days, Oklahoma and Nebraska. And from Norman, this was Johnny Rogers as he weaves his way. 74 yards and a touchdown in the game of the century. He was electrifying. And man, what a football player.
There he is now, still looking pretty sharp. I, I, you know, in today's times, they would probably would have thrown three flags on that return. <laughs> the illegal block in the back five times, huh? Yeah, too close to him, didn't give him enough room to catch the ball. Right. Second down along four. Beasley lofts one his arms, hit as he throws. Let's see, did he keep a foot in bounds? Morgan, nope, out of bounds. Trying to keep that trail foot in there. Carlos Polk put a hit on Beasley as he let go of the ball. He never really got a chance to follow through on the throw. Exactly. He was uh, he didn't follow through very, very well. Yep. Yep, he's out. Good call by Good the call. official right there. Heck of you a know, catch, even though he was out of bounds. Talking about David Allen and his seven punt returns for touchdowns in his career, and he's only a junior. He's had three of them called back. That's right. Third down and four. They've got to start picking up their third downs to have a chance in this game. Here comes a delayed blitz. Beasley lofts it out. Wide open was Lockett. He's been rattled all day. Just enough that when he gets an open receiver, he can't quite yeah. find him. That's the Dell game solution for the Nebraska defense was rattle the quarterback, get after him, knock him down. Charlie McBride, the coordinator, that is always his, his scheme. Rattle the, the heart of the offense, which is the quarterback. So time to punt again, the third straight three and out for the Wildcats. And again now, the punter finds himself in a bad position at his own five-yard line. And Nebraska has gotten after the one weakness in their special teams, and that is the punter. Newcomb and Walker both waiting on the punt, hoping one of them can get their hands on it. This kick should be fielded by Newcomb if he has enough real estate, just enough at the 39. And out of bounds at about the 47. An eight-yard return for Bobby Newcomb. Raph Brown and the black shirt defense doing their job today. They lead 24-9. Nebraska, a couple of touchdowns from Eric Crouch in the first half. Willie Miller, the fullback, took one in. They blocked a punt for a safety, and they lead fifth-ranked Kansas State 24-9. Eric Crouch will give it off. Hedrick out to midfield. Picked up almost five. Fadafehi knocked him off his pins, but Darren Diedrich, the redshirt freshman out of Scarborough, uh, Scarborough, Ontario, is doing a good job as the eye back today for Nebraska. He is. He's getting a lot of work, too. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, both Alexander and Buckholder, the two eye backs in front of him, fumbled early in the game. And, uh, Alexander fumble on the first snap of the yeah. game. I don't think we've seen him since. Well, we haven't seen, we haven't gotten any reports that they're, uh, they're hurt. Right? Right. Second and six. Hedrick again trying to spin for yardage and didn't get any. Ben game. Lieber, the linebacker, made the stop. Coming up Thanksgiving weekend, Spain's El Nino on ABC. Third down and six coming up. I'll never forget that shot he hit from the, uh, from the tree, uh, from the stump of the tree. Tiger had one sort of like that yesterday. Wrapped his iron right around the tree. <laughs> Third down and six. End around coming. Well, Crouch is coming this way. Newcomb trailing him, and he only got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe eked out a yard. Chris Johnson is the guy that made the stop. So Kansas State's defense does a nice job on that series. Yeah, and they're going to have to step up and create some something good for their offense because their offense is, is not going to take it down the field against this Nebraska defense. So the second straight three and out for Nebraska. Kansas State's had three in a row, so this thing's just kind of hanging around midfield right now, which is, is the line of scrimmage. Hayden fouled the kick. He's been kicking to his left all day. Now he's Whoops. He, angled this one. Yeah. he was going to kick this one to the right. Kansas and, and State. He, and he couldn't do it because the man was there. Adrian Beard was coming in there trying to block the kick. Yeah, he'd been Ran kicking left all day Cooper. because he's a right-footed punter, and he's that's the safe area to punt. But when you aim to the right, you go out where near that uh, the guy's coming to block it. Take a look over here from this side. Boy, Beard almost got it. He did well to pull it down, actually, and get back near the line of scrimmage. That thing might have been stuffed and rolled all the way back to the 20. Who knows? Beard's had a couple of blocks already this year. Kansas State, new quarterback. Adam Helm is at it. The Helm, that is, at the 49-yard line. Murphy. Oof, man, what a shot he took from Ralph Brown. Ouch. And Murphy staying down. Remember, he's had all kinds of injury problems. 
was not 100% coming into this game, and he just took a wicked lick from senior co captain Ralph Brown. Take a look from behind the defense. There's Brown, number 22. He sees what's going on. He just plain got one right under the chin from the helmet of Ralph Brown, I think. That was a wicked lick. Ralph Brown has started 48 straight games. I think this is his 49th straight game. He's a four year starter. Every game at Nebraska, he has started. And he's the guy that said to the media, We are not losing Saturday. If we do, come back and talk to me. And he just put Frank Murphy probably out of the ballgame. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler. Right, Frank, 51 yards on the day, and the day might be done after that tackle. Second down. And eight, the ball just outside the Nebraska 47. Adam Helm, and now he can't stand the noise or the play that's called and has to take a valuable timeout. 417 remaining, third quarter. Helm took a timeout. Kansas State down to two. Ten plays this half, 11 yards. Two possessions uh, in Nebraska territory, and they missed a field goal, and there were three and out on the other one. So they're not being, uh, not taking advantage of what they're being get, getting up for. What am I trying to say here? Not taking advantage of the few moments they get in Nebraska's yeah. side of the yeah. field. Slecta just hammered Helm. The thing that the thing that a new quarterback in the ball game cannot do is let the crowd noise affect him. Especially, don't let him think it's affecting you. Don't call a timeout. Don't say you can't hear. Just get up there and run the play. You know, one of the stats that amazed me about the Nebraska defense coming into this game, they had only allowed the opposition 15 drives to reach their 20-yard line this year. Yeah. Think about that in yeah. nine games. Third down and eight. Helm with an empty backfield. Throws the screen. Morgan can't handle it. And Eric Johnson scoops it up, but that's an incompleted pass. Yeah, they're trying, they're trying the wide receiver screen. They can't, they can't get the ball downfield. This is just a dominant defense by the Cornhuskers. So now it's 11 plays for 11 yards, and it's time to punt again. Another three and out. And last time. Newcomb and Walker didn't get a chance at it. See how Ronsick does this time. He's been hurried and hassled and hammered all day. One block, one deflected. He's going to throw off this one. Nebraska had it read beautifully. Yeah, that's a desperate team right there. That's a desperate team by uh, Kansas State when when your defense forces the punter out of the pocket and you get field position at the 50 yard line you run three plays you can't get anything you have to go to some some trickery like this. Greg List made the play second generation Cornhusker and his mom and dad who died in a plane crash six years ago. There's a remarkable resemblance between he and his father in their football pictures at Nebraska. You think he's a happy senior, I'd yeah. say. Fifth year senior, last game here today. Crouch carries a couple of tacklers down to the 42 yard line. We carry it to John Saunders in New York. Right time for the Burger King to back Rose Bowls. Here's a fumble. Daedric, did he get back on top of it? Another drop ball in the backfield by Nebraska. Is that eight fumbles? That looked like a bad toss by the quarterback. It looked like it hit him in the head. Didn't yeah, it? I think that was just a, just a bad toss by Crouch. Well, any coach in the country would like to have a running back like Ron Dane. We talked to Frank Solich about number 33. He's been able to to just take over games, uh, make the big plays, get the yards when they're needed, the tough yards, and, and then certainly his ability. Uh, with all that strength and power then to show the burst and to uh, to make the big play you know those kind of guys don't come along all the time crouch hit as he throws incomplete and of course Frank Solich and Barry Alvarez the Wisconsin coach played together here at Nebraska under Bob Devaney and are still good friends talk pretty frequently many times coach Alvarez will come down here if Wisconsin has an off weekend and Nebraska's at home he'll come down to the game down here it's fourth down again and 
It just keeps inching a little bit more. I'm, I'm <laughs> on the ball. I'm on the line of scrimmage the whole third yeah. quarter here. Yeah. Five yards here, five yards there. 2.41 left. Well, this guy right here in punt, for, in, uh, punt return formation is the best chance to score because their offense doesn't seem like it's going to get it done. High kick to the sideline again. Bounces. I bet you Allen had a notion about just scooping that thing just to get his hands on it, but he doesn't. Has to let it go dead at the 13-yard line. They won't give it to number 32. I don't blame him. Eric Crouch, two touchdowns in this game. A 30-yarder opened the scoring. And then the block on the punt by Stella. Safety, 9-0 Nebraska. An 18-yard run by Crouch, who's got a career day going on the ground. Beasley went in from a yard out. That was the only Kansas State touchdown, and Willie Miller for Nebraska has made it 24-9. And Eric Crouch has a career-high rushing day, by the way, if, so far. If teams are going to continue to punt away from David Allen, why not put two guys back there, yeah. line them up in I formation, and then rush them just as he's kicking it, split them so he doesn't know which side he's going to go to. Quarterback draw by Helm. He did this five or six times last week in the win over Colorado fairly effectively. At least he got him some breathing room. Got him nine out to the 22. Got him some self-confidence. Now he get into the ball game. Uh, Bill Snyder, Ron Hudson, the offensive coordinators. Just get him in the game. Get him, run some plays where he's going to do some positive things and get some confidence going here. There isn't much confidence when you have the football ten times and you go seven of those without even getting a first down. They're a yard short of a first down here. It's been a constant three and out situation for both clubs here in this third quarter. Allen, there's a first down. Not by much, but he got it. First first down since there was three minutes remaining in the second quarter for the Wildcats. That's a long time ago. Recently entered into the LPGA Hall ABC crew in Lincoln. They're big. Their big play guys are on the outside, and they need to get the ball out there. They've tried, and they only had one completion, and that was kind of a wobbly duck. Marshall remains unbeaten. Went over Western Michigan. Only five unbeaten teams in Division 1A coming into this day. Chad Pennington's numbers, a couple of touchdowns today, as you see on the screen. But Kansas State's undefeated record is very much in jeopardy. We've got 16 minutes and five seconds left in this game, and they trail 24-9. Well, here are their big play guys out here. This single coverage, the wide receiver, but they haven't been able to get him the ball. They'll work from the gun. Helm's going to take off again on the keeper, and he's got a first down up the middle. Pays the price, and a fumble at the end of the play. Wait a minute. Nebraska's got it. It's Mike Brown. Ralph had one earlier. Now Mike's got his. <laughs> They're not brothers, but they play like it back there. Well, we said early on it wouldn't be pretty. It was going to be a defensive battle, some special teams mixed in. And the defenses have dominated. Another one of the seniors in that secondary. Nebraska takes over at the K-State 44 with 44 seconds remaining in the quarter. Here's a counter. Diedrich, nice move. Inside the 35, he's down to the 32-yard line. First down, Cornhuskers. Let's go back and take a look at that fumble. Helm with a nice run. Brown Ball. helped out on the hit and then scooped it right underneath him. Ball was definitely out before he hit the ground. Tackler on the team and four interceptions. He's been the leading tackler the last three years on that defense. He's on the Nagurski list, and that was a Nagurski type hit that helped that fumble recovery. Now Crouch just about got going there. Jeremetrius Butler knocked him off his pins, or he might have been off to the races again. The third quarter set to come to a close, and at the end of three. Nebraska leading 24 to 9. ABC Sports presentation of college football. A return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. There were only five at the end of this one, you might say, and then there were four. Kansas State trailing 24 to 9 as we enter the fourth quarter. Nebraska with the lead and the ball. Diedrich up the middle. 
First down, Cornhuskers inside the 20. Simino holding on with Cooper to try to bring him down, but it's a first down, Nebraska. You look at the shakeup and the undefeateds. Marshall, we just told you, one to go to 10 and 0, but they really don't figure into the BCS picture, at least not right now. Who knows? But their strength of schedule doesn't help them at all, despite their perfect record. Mississippi State and Alabama playing right now in the fourth quarter. Alabama trying to ruin the unbeaten string of the Bulldogs. And Alabama would then be in position to win the West in the SEC and go on and play Florida. Florida has won today. They beat South Carolina. Tennessee lost to Arkansas. So the East has already cleared up. It's Florida in the Georgia Dome in the SEC title game. And this, if this game goes as it is going right now and Kansas State loses, Two of the five, two of the top five teams in the bowl championship series standings right. will have lost. Number two, Tennessee, and number five, Kansas State. Second down and nine. On the option. Crouch puts his head down and goes down near the 15-yard line. Lamar Chapman makes a stop along with Cliff Holloman. Pickup of about three. And now everything's the enemy to Kansas State. The clock, the scoreboard, 77,000 fans. And Eric Crouch, who's got 152 yards for a career-high rushing day and two touchdowns. 222 yards of total offense. Not bad. He came into the day with 87 uh, attempts without an interception, and he has not thrown one here today. He had 247 yards of offense last year. Here he goes again middle to about the 13 yard line still four yards three or four yards shy of the first down Simino and number 42 gets off the tackle again and it's a good thing he did because there was some running room if uh, Simino had not been there there's the Butkus finalists and Simino among them along with LeVar Arrington and Brandon Short and Raynock Thompson two Penn State uh, finalists there he is a good one. Frankie London to hold. Remember, London scooped up the snap and went in for a two-point conversion earlier. This time he spots it down for his kicker, and Josh Brown knocks it home by about a foot inside the pipe. 30-yard field goal is added to the lead. It's 27-9. the hometown crowds in our graphic meetings for games <laughs> five national championships to none conference titles 17 to none wins in Lincoln in the last three decades none Nebraska leads 27 to 9 George Williams and the return set up to the right he comes back that way and gets out near the 29 yard line <laughs> Well, here's a look at what's going on today in the BCS. We can scratch Tennessee. They lost to Arkansas. Kansas State is losing and looks like it will lose. And Michigan beat Penn State. Penn State is going to move down. Look at Nebraska. Nebraska moves up to number four. Virginia Tech has a big game tonight. Florida State and Florida have already won. And they're on a collision course, of course, next week. It's all going to get cleared up by itself, I think. From the 29. We may be looking for teams to play in that game. <laughs> Here's a pitch to Joe Hall, and he is knocked down by Tony Ortiz, the outside linebacker. Tony Ortiz, you know these linebackers at uh, Nebraska really get along well. Ortiz and Brian Shaw, who, who alternate and share time. One guy starts one week, the next guy starts the next week. Shaw is from Nebraska, is kind of a farm boy, and Ortiz is from the Bronx, and uh, they get along very nicely. Shaw right there takes him out to the farm and kind of shows him around. Shows him what trees and grass look like. Yeah, and cows. <laughs> <laughs> Second and nine. Pump fake. Helm has plenty of time. He's got a streak on the sideline, incomplete intended for Quincy Morgan, and nice coverage out there by Mike Brown. Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet also donates two $1,000 high school scholarships. 
Eleven thirty-eight left in the ball game. To practice uh, the other day, Eric Johnson, number twenty-seven, the other outside linebacker, shares time with Julius Jackson, and he came off the last play of the defense and said, "Hey, we just ran something," and they talked about what happened just in case Jackson was in there during the ball game. Third and nine, sharing information. Hell, intercepted, picked off by Mike Brown. recovery and an interception in this half for the defensive co-captain that's two turnovers this week he had two turnovers last week top right of your screen oh he just just making a nice play that was a bad throw yep. he had two interceptions forced two fumbles last week there's the brothers Brown even though they're not yeah Ralph and Mike went on a recruiting trip, met on a recruiting trip at USC, decided neither one of them wanted to be Trojans. They kept in contact. They end up in Nebraska. Their co-captains and Diedrichs off to the races, down the sideline. Touchdown, Nebraska! and we're seeing the birth of an eye back. Darren Diedrich, 46 yards, touchdown. <laughs> Extra point coming up. Josh Brown out of a Frankie London hole. It's 34 to 9. Last year, a Kansas State upset. This year, nothing doing. Nebraska, a big lead with 11.21 to go. They're enjoying it, to say the least. With Mick Jagger saying it started up in the background. I think this one started and finished already, maybe. 34-9. Kick taken by Williams, one of the up men. And George Williams cuts outside. He got a nice return out to the 38-yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football. And a near-record crowd. 78 people shy of a record crowd. I don't know why they didn't want to be here. It was 84 degrees at kickoff. They are having some fun at Memorial Stadium. Helm in trouble. Down he goes. Jason Lohr got it. Jason Lohr was in the backfield. He just he just pushed his offensive lineman back with it. Nebraska can smell the victory now. They have a six-game home winning streak, five and zero this year at home. Their only loss of the season was to Texas when the Longhorns came from behind a win. And will they have another date with Mac Brown's Longhorns? In the Big 12 championship encounter in San Antonio, Texas Tech has something to say about that. So does Colorado, who Nebraska plays next. But right now, they've got Kansas State all wrapped up. He got away from Vandenbosch. You just can't stand in the pocket that long and not expect to get hit. To look at the defensive line, a little game there. Select at number 56. Kaiser's going around. Wills is there. Banded Bosch, the guy that got the first contact, couldn't hold on, but his partner, including Jason Lohr, cleaned up. They hate that too. Those defensive linemen, <laughs> they love those sacks. <laughs> when they get a chance to get the quarterback and get a sack, they love it. That's the first official sack of the day. 37 to lead the Big 12. But boy, they've been in that backfield after those quarterbacks all day long. Here they come after him again. up in the line sees him rolling 
It's man coverage, and he just attacks the quarterback. Unless Rodzik really kicks this one at an angle, either Newcomb or Walker might have a chance at it. Turf, but they've got a 34 9 lead. To a party tonight in Lincoln. I think they've already partied. <laughs> <laughs> the party may continue tonight. I think the headache comes next. <laughs> First down at the 38 yard line. Here's a toss. Fumble! This time Kansas State's got it. Jared Cooper has been picked on all day in the right place at the right time, and that's the tenth time the ball's come popping out of there. Frank Solid shaking his head, even though he's got a big lead. Who was the running back on this one? Was it Buck Halter? Was it Buck Halter? Buck Halter was back in the game, and that doesn't sit well nope. with the offensive coaches. He already fumbled once. They give him a shot. He goes back in the game and fumbles again. There's Alexander. Alexander. He fumbled on the first play of the game. And Diedrich has been doing well. Helm finally completed pass out to Aaron Lockett. It's not a first down, but it's a pickup of eight. And we're down under eight and a half. First completion for Aaron Lockett. And Lockett says, let's hustle. We don't have much time. Yeah, throw me some more of those. Been open all day. In the last 31 games in this series, 26 times Nebraska scored 30 or more points and held Kansas State in single digits 17 times over that same stretch. Quarterback draw. Polk meets Helm, but Helm got the first down and a little shoving at the end of the play. Just under eight minutes remaining in the football game. This one has been dominated by sixth ranked Nebraska. In front of a sellout crowd at Memorial Stadium, they have enjoyed a beautiful day and a fairly pretty performance by their club, with the exception of all the fumbles. Ten times Nebraska has lost the handle, and yet their defense has been phenomenal. Their special teams have done some special things, and they lead 34 to 9 with 7:42 remaining in the football game. The amazing thing is. Nebraska defensively their offense has fumbled the ball so many times and they still have overcome all that only given up three field goals Helm throws incomplete intended for Morgan excuse me a touchdown and a field goal but uh, still nine points very few penalties today but there is another flag down this one thrown in the secondary And maybe they're going to pick it up. Look like they're going to pick it up. John Lurie's our referee, John. Well, they are going to call oh, offensive pass interference. That's the call against Bill Snyder's club. Tomorrow on ABC, the ISU Grand Prix of figure skating continues. Dynamic pair of Americans. So that was a penalty against Kansas State. Mark Simino, who has worked so hard and made so many tackles all year and today. Uh, done all he can do. Yep. He looks out there at his offensive teammates. Have a first and 20 now back at the 39 yard line. Yeah, they had to walk off the extra five. That's what, five more, yeah. Yeah. This is a Nebraska team that lost early in the season to Texas but has worked its way back up. It'll be number four in the BCS. And you know. Proves the better time to lose is early. If you're going to lose, lose early. First and 25. Helm on a slant. What a catch by Morgan. Morgan breaks a tackle into the clear. He's got great speed. 
And he's all the way to the 15-yard line. Good speed and good moves. You want to get the ball to him as many times as you can. He came in tonight with 37 receptions, eight touchdowns, and uh, he's dangerous. Those eight touchdowns that he scored, he's averaged 50 yards per touchdown reception. And you can see why, because he can break tackles, he's strong, and he's fast. Yeah. He's got 116 yards receiving. Would you believe that today? And just three catches. No, I wouldn't. Helm, quarterback draw. Drew himself right into a hole there. That play, Polk. play is taking too long to develop. He's not getting into the hole quick enough. Grant, Bob, you're talking about throwing the football and Quincy Morgan being a fine receiver. That was a great play, especially with the high degree of frustration that all the receivers for Kansas State have shown today. They've been open a lot in this ball game, but the quarterbacks have been so inconsistent, have not given the opportunity to make the catches. Three wideouts here for him. Nebraska even thought about a blitz. They don't come with it. The pass is incomplete. George Williams looked like he didn't see it coming until it was almost to him. And it brings up third and eight with 631 left. Last year, this team had Michael Bishop, and he was just amazing. He was he was a little unorthodox and a little unusual, but he got it done. He had over 460 yards of offense last year. All by himself. It's got to be frustrating for Bill Snyder to have such a, a tremendous defense uh, and good special teams for the most part. And then be frustrated on offense and not being able to get a lot done. K-State's missed on their last seven third down conversions. Helm with time. Across the middle, incomplete. And David Allen got a hand on it and then took a shot from Clint Finley. And now they're down to fourth and nine. Beg your pardon, fourth and eight. They should be doing hitting the back out of the backfield. The Allen, David Allen, going to let the thing clear out. He's just going to sneak over the uh, wide open. You got to drill those. It was a little bit in front of him, but you got to think maybe Allen was knowing Finley was there. This might be the last time Kansas State touches it on offense if they don't pick up this first down. Fourth and eight. Helm over the middle has got Lockett, and it's first and goal. At the four yard line. So they stay alive, got nine yards on a fourth and eight. Adam Helm uh, started a couple of games earlier in the season. He's the son of a coach, so he's been around. He knows what it's like uh, studying and preparing and the frustrations. And it's a big play here. Fourth down, keep the drive going. So it's first and goal, Kansas State. All three wide outs to the right of Helm, and he's going to take off with it. And he got to get down to about the one. Julius Jackson holding on to him. Helm's a big kid, 6'3", 225, doesn't mind sticking his head in there. And now he's got him close to the Nebraska goal line. 550 left. Ninth play of the Kansas State drive. And don't you know the pride of that Nebraska defense would like to come up with a goal line stand here. Joe Hall, a single setback. It's Helm, and it's a touchdown. In for the score from a little over a yard out. Ball carried by Adam Helm. Helm. So Go now you know you've got an onside carry. kick coming up. A long way to go, though, for Bill Snyder's Wildcats here. Back here. Back. Just That's powered some, ahead. Some good movement in the middle of that offensive line. So you go for, go for, they're going to go for two go here. For two, if you make it, that's uh, 34 to 17. You're still down by 17 points. Let's see if they've run out of quarterback draws. Nope. <laughs> that's good call. <laughs> Julius Jackson knew that too. <laughs> so 34-15 is the way it stays with 5:33 left. Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, where the sixth ranked team in the country leads number five, 34 to 15, with 533 left in the good hands, folks, are up close for Nebraska as we await the impending onside kick from Jamie Ream. He's got it lined up to go to that far side where 
Matt Davison and some of those guys are waiting on it. Here it comes. And it is picked up by Brown. He almost broke a tackle. Mike Brown's done a little bit of everything today. I thought he was going to take an onside kick for a touchdown. Yeah, they were working on that the, just the other day. And uh, the same thing happened. They kicked it right to him. He wants it. He's in the primary spot. He and Davison, number three, right next to him. And you can bet that those two guys have the best hands on the team, and, and they've done that before in practice. Scooped it up and went the other way. And a first down at the 37. And it's Diedrich back in there at the I-back spot. What a surprise, huh? Two tight ends set. One guy that's held out of the ball today. And he holds out here after a pickup of about a yard. Simino made another tackle. And he has been around the football today. Battling off a blocker to bring down Crouch and then sideline to sideline for another hit on the quarterback, forcing a fumble. Had a great game last week, was Big 12 Player of the Week last week, and those numbers don't hurt him in that respect this week either, except his team's losing. 14 tackles today. Coach said he didn't make any mistakes last week. Said he looked down the film and looked and looked and couldn't find it. Couldn't find one. Graded out 100%. Coach Snyder can't find something wrong on film on you. You've played one heck of a football game. <laughs> Eric Crouch goes down. Let's check in with John in New York. <laughs> Brad Washington, Rick Neuheisel back in the Orange Bowl, in the Rose Bowl. Maybe. He's there now, though. Third down and six. Inside handoff, and we'll work our way under four minutes here. You know, Nebraska's moving their way up the, the polls, and it, as we showed you a little earlier, they're going to be probably number four in the BCS poll next week. They've won the national championship three of the last five years. They haven't won it when uh, Frank Solich was uh, was the head coach, but uh, 94, 95, and 97. Tom Osborne was there, and they won it three of the like, three or four years uh, when he his last few years. On the fourth down, Crouch, the pitch. Nope. Going down at the 25 is Applegate. And Kansas State's going to be able to take over. Don't forget time permitting the thrifty car rental post game report with John and Terry all the scores and highlights including Ron Dane's run into the record books Tennessee picked off by Arkansas today Penn State beaten by Michigan you'll see all the highlights and scores with those two guys coming up time permitting you talk about the winning streak and the winning ways of Nebraska football and we mentioned they've got a six game in a row home winning streak coming into this one five wins this year but they in the last 11 years at home if they win this game will be 74 and three I think there's not just a little bit of home field advantage oh, yeah. Helm pump once and pays the price got hammered by what, Brian Shaw and one of those losses was just last year to Texas, Texas right. the team that they may play in the Big 12 championship game Texas and Texas Tech play tonight in fact, Texas has beaten them the last two years. They beat them last year in Austin. I think that game starts in about 15 minutes, as a matter of fact. Virginia Tech, of course, plays tonight on ESPN. Huge game for them against Miami. And Florida and Florida State having one sets up showdown time for them next week. Those are just some of the things John and Terry will talk about and you'll be thinking about all week as the college football season hits the fun part. Oh, that's no fun. Vandenbosch levels Helm and now Johnson takes it in it's a touchdown <laughs> Vanden Bosch a six foot four inch Tasmanian devil and he just leveled Helm and Johnson did the rest the sack this time coming from over here on this side and advice gets the sack and Johnson gets the touchdown
Josh Brown for the extra point. It's 41 to 15. One's been solution, our Dell game solutions. These are the guys you talked about coming in. Well, we talked about getting after Beasley. He was only three of 19, and Crouch had a big day, not throwing necessarily, but but running the football. Two touchdowns and a lot of yardage. Faces tell the story of this one. The happy faces of almost 78,000 fans plus the team. Lamar Chapman, nice return. Let's check in with Swanee. Thank you, Brad. I'm with John Junker, executive director of the Fiesta Bowl, who's here to watch two football teams that might represent the Big 12 in the Fiesta Bowl. You know, Lynn, that's been a great game today. Really a big statement by Nebraska, and they, they look to be a team on the move in the BCS standings. Well, now, if they, if they move up, obviously they wouldn't be available to you, but this is a team you'd like to see in the Fiesta Bowl. Nebraska, I think any, any bowl would love to have uh, in, in their bowl. Kansas State, you got to give them credit. A lot of teams have come to Lincoln and had a long afternoon. There's no quit in that team. But Nebraska really has made quite a statement today. John, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, Swanee. First down, just under three to play. Helm, here comes Jackson. Got to him. Fourth sack. They're eating up the Wildcat quarterbacks now. We're talking about the Big 12 and going bowling. They'll send their champion to the Fiesta Bowl. And there, the Cotton Bowl gets the second pick, the Holiday Bowl gets the third pick, and on down. It's nice to see that Cotton Bowl up there. That would have been in place last year if Kansas State would have been there. Fumble! They're going to whistle it dead. Julius Jackson again put his helmet right between the one and the nine on the back of the Kansas State quarterback. We're near the end of the game, but I'll repeat what I said at the start. It's going to be a defensive battle, yep. and it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> if you're a Kansas State quarterback, it certainly hasn't been pretty today. Yeah. That one could have just as easily I, yeah. been ruled a fumble. I think that's a fumble, but I don't think it makes any difference. No, I don't think it does either. We've had uh, turnovers. We've had seven, seven turnovers. The defense led by Mike and Ralph Brown. Phenomenal, both those young fellas. Both had interceptions, fumble recoveries. They talked with us about how much it would mean to be walking out on this field for the final time, for the final home game. And boy, are they going to have sweet memories of it. Helm on a throwback. Got it to his tight end. The ball's loose again. Nebraska's got it. You got to hold on to the football. I mean, that's you can't. They don't let you go out onto the field unless you can hold on to the football. Ben Buttonback's got the fumble recovery this time. Bill Schneider knows this game is well over. It's the tight end Meyer. That's uh, that's just carelessness. Another of the undefeateds. Two minutes away from going by the boards. Fifth Kansas State turnover. Jeff Perino's in at quarterback. Nebraska has turned it over three times. Five times for Kansas State. Eight turnovers in the game. Buck Alder gets the carry. Today, Chevrolet players of the game. Eric Crouch, a sensational afternoon, a career high rushing the football and two touchdowns that set the tone. Mark Simino, 15 tackles today for the Kansas State Wildcats. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet will also donate $1,000 to two high schools. We're down to the last minute, 40 seconds. Nebraska is going to get their sweet revenge from last year. It was 40 to 30 as Kansas State thought they might be on their way to a national championship shot. They came in here today, 6-0 in conference play, 9-0 overall. They thought again, maybe, with whatever happens above them, that they would again be in the BCS picture. That picture has now faded to black for them because in a minute and 20 seconds, number six is going to hand number five a 41-15 defeat. We've got a, and I, 
shaking up player. And I know everything is kind of peachy and happy and everything else for the red and the, the, the big red and Nebraska and everything else. But unless they eliminate all of the turnovers and all of the fumbles that they've had on offense, they will not continue to win tough games, right. tight games, if you're going to drop the ball and put it on the ground all those times. They led the nation coming in and, and fumbles given up. Mike's giving something back to the fans <laughs> yep. who've been here 233 times without an empty seat. And Perino, the quarterback, keeps it. Goes down to the 21-yard line as another senior getting a chance to play a little bit. And we're down to the final minute. Oh, man, how good those seniors have been over the years. Ortiz yep. and Mike Brown in an embrace on the sideline. That's, that's what it's all about right about there. And it, not, it, 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 it gets to the players, but it starts with the coaching staff and the continuity that has gone through here for 20, 30 years. Right. From Solich to Osborne to Delaney, Devaney, I mean, and, and then on back. But all of those, all of those years building this program to what it is, the new press box, the new field, everything that goes on in this uh, tradition here, and it gets back down to the players. Bill Byrne, the athletic director, came in, talked to us today, and uh, how proud he is of how this place has turned out, and and now how proud everybody can be of that second-year coach who's taken a lot of guff. It's hard to take over for a legend, and this is another year now of winning at least nine games, and that's. What 33 years in a row. Think about that for a minute. Uh -huh. Man. Now to the final 42 seconds. Our New York remote coordinator Vince D'Addario. College football today technical director Kevin Behrman. College football today directed by Calvin Haywood. College football today produced by Charles Coplin. Our computer stats. Jason Shaviko, Clint Dean's our spotter, Pat McGrath our stat man, assistance to the producer Chapman Downs and Craven Martin, Jake Gleason, our technical operations manager, our production manager Joe Alvarado, associate director Margaret Schaefer, Fred King, our associate producer, our technical director Jeff Suarez, as Perino on the option, he is going to keep it and go down, run out of bounds. Today's game. Directed by Chip Dean and produced by Jay Rothman. They gave you all the beautiful shots of what we saw a resounding win. Coordinating producer of ABC's college football is Bob Goodrich. Vice president of production is John Filippelli. The president and executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. Folks, we've seen the number five team in the country fall. And they just keep falling from the ranks of the undefeated. And Nebraska is going to move up in the polls, move up in the BCS. They'll move from number six probably to number four. They do it in style. Final score, Cornhuskers 41, Kansas State 15. Frank Solich might be his biggest win in his two years as head coach of the Cornhuskers. Bill Snyder's team falls for the first time this year. No one really expected them to ever be in this position to be at 9-0 and have a chance for the national championship. But they have played brilliantly all year. They just ran into a buzzsaw wearing red today, led by the seniors, that black shirt defense. And the winning coach is with Lynn Swan. Coach, a tremendous win for you. Congratulations. Your thoughts on this victory? I thought our uh, team played tremendous. Uh, played with a lot of heart. Um, you know, that we showed a lot of speed, a lot of quickness, uh, just a, a, a lot of determination. They wanted to get it done on really on both sides of the ball and in the kicking game. Uh, you know, there's some things we could still work on or some things we got to get better at, but they did a great job. Uh, and I'm so proud of the kids and the staff for uh, for getting this win. We all anticipated a great defensive struggle, but when you came out in the first half, yeah. it appeared that your offense was able to move the ball the way you wanted to. Yeah. Well, you know, we wanted to try to uh, establish something on the ground because if you just have to go to a throwing game against these guys with their speed, it's pretty tough. We were able to get some of that gone uh, in, in the early gone. And, and then uh, I think we did uh, try to keep them off balance at least with some uh, mixing it up with some uh, pass plays as we went through there. You know, we always go to the next game as soon as one's done. <laughs> this is a victory. It's in the books. Yeah. But the next game against Colorado is the one that would seal uh, it's the a, championship for it's you. A, it's a big one. Colorado's a great team. They're improving. Uh, they, they struggled a little bit early, but they're not struggling now. So it, it'll be a great ball game. Your biggest win? As a head coach? Uh, it, it's a big win. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. Appreciate it. I think you'll think about that and say yes to the answer, Swanee. A good one it was. 
as now teams that got together for 84 times and this time it goes in Nebraska's favor again 41 to 15 they win it as Swanee said Thanksgiving weekend Colorado will have something to say about who wins the North and who goes out of the Big 12 championship but right now the folks in Lincoln think it's their team in red final score the sixth ranked Cornhuskers upset Kansas State 41 to 15 the final for Lynn Swan, Bob Greasy, and our ABC crew. I'm Brad Nessler. Thanks for joining us. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Good night from Lincoln.